full-time income working from home as a trader. That's the Trading Group Show, Sundays at noon. The question line is 888-646-8787. These are worrisome times, causing a lot of stress and concern. And being in debt to the IRS can certainly make matters worse. Thankfully, there's good news. Optima Tax Relief can help you resolve your tax debt over the phone and online. Don't go it alone. Optima's tax professionals can reduce the stress in your life by helping resolve your IRS problems right from the comfort of your own home. Optima is America's most trusted tax resolution firm, having resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. And their award-winning team is ready to help you online and over the phone, even during these uncertain times. They'll stand between you and the IRS and fight to get you the best deal possible. All it takes is one call to start the process. Optima's tax associates are standing by. Take the first step toward putting your tax problems to rest. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-709-6011. That's 800-709-6011. 809-6011. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. SportsX Radio Nation, what's up? It's Ken Thompson, host of SportsX Radio, reminding you to catch me at my new time, 8 to 10 p.m., for the local Vegas sports coverage plus national scene as well. That's SportsX Radio on the new 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDWN. 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDON, the talk of Los Angeles. Vegas. The opinions of the hosts on KDWN are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. Hello, everyone. This is President Trump, the greatest president <clears throat> in the history <clears throat> of presidents. And the only show I listen to is the top rated show, Sharp and Shapiro. They are the best. <laughs> Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. What is, what is this? this is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, what's up, Las Vegas? Good morning. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. That's right. You get it all on the show. The left, the right, everywhere in the middle. We're covering it for back at you. That's right, on a Tuesday. In... My kitchen. That's right. Thanks to this wonderful coronavirus. With but, no uh, end in sight. We, that's right. Uh, we might be here until I'm on Social Security. That's a, a definite possibility. Yeah. However... As long as it's right, Brian, that's it. That's all I care about. Well, however, we do have a lot to get to today, though. Whether it's on uh, in my bathroom, in my bedroom, or in my kitchen table, we have a lot to get to. We have a jam-packed show for you today. We're going to get to this uh, Donald Trump situation taking hydro. Uh, and I don't mean the Oreo cookies. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. And the way that Hy- Paul... Hydrox. Yeah, I know. Hydrox. If I say hydro, it's the Oreo cookies. Uh, I like to say it, though, because I do believe he's taking hydro. Well, we'll get to that. I think Nancy Pelosi would agree with well, me on that Or the high-grade marijuana plant. So coming up uh, later on this hour, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how some Trump supporters, once again, are harassing reporters. And Donald Trump uh, seems to think that's just quite fine. It's okay. We'll talk about that coming up later on in the program. We've been covering this Stephen Horsford situation, and uh, not even really a sex scandal. It's more of... Well, he's been cheating on his wife for the last decade. Well, Congresswoman Dina Titus will be joining us in hour number two. This is going to be very interesting because, as you know, Dina is a lifelong Democrat. I would imagine they're pretty they're friends. So I, I want to know what she has to say about this whole issue. And uh, she'll be joining us coming up in hour number two. Uh, the latest on the Ahmad Arbery case, uh, there's a new police video that just came out. And it shows police really... Uh, there's no other way to describe this, harassing Arbery. He was doing absolutely nothing wrong. His car was parked in a park, and police stopped him and, and, and searched him for no reason. And these are the issues that this county and many counties across the country are going through now. An African-American man doing absolutely nothing wrong and police harassing this kid for no reason. And now he's dead, by the way. That's hour number two. We'll talk a little bit about that. This is going to be really interesting in hour number three. So if you were wondering... <laughs> When strip clubs are going to be opening in Las Vegas, if you're just dying to get back into a strip club, uh, boy, that's, that's, that's probably the wrong word to use. But uh, if you really, really are itching to get back into a strip club, well, there's a guy that's opening up his strip club in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, the owner of The Den, uh, Greg Chavez, will be joining us in hour number three. I'll ask him if he's concerned about people contracting the virus in his strip club. And uh, you might have heard a little bit about board gaming. They just came out with a new reopening plan uh, for Vegas for their casinos. And uh, right now, if you go to Louisiana and uh, Mississippi, those casinos are open. So the vice president of corporate communications for Boyd Gaming, David Stroh, 
will be joining us in hour number three. So as I mentioned, we have a jam-packed show today, a lot to get to, a lot to go over. But I'm watching TV yesterday. It was literally right after our show, and Donald Trump is holding a, a press conference. And he's answering questions from the media. And he just throws out there, and nobody knew this, at least nobody in the press knew this. I don't even think some of his handlers knew this because they were scrambling, that Donald Trump claiming for the last week and a half or so he's been taking – hydroxychloroquine. So this is Donald Trump yesterday speaking in front of the media saying that he's taking the drug. Have a listen to this. The frontline workers, many, many are taking it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. When? Right now, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. And if it's not good, I'll tell you right. I'm not going to get hurt by it. It's been around for 40 years for malaria, for lupus, for other things. I take it. Frontline workers take it. A lot of doctors take it. Excuse me. A lot of doctors take it. I take it. Now, I hope to not be able to take it soon because, you know, I hope they come up with some answer. But I think people should be allowed to. Okay, so here, uh, here's the facts on this. And this isn't just my opinion. This isn't an opinion. I'm going to give you the facts. Hydroxychloroquine is an un proven drug for this virus. And obviously I'm talking about the coronavirus. It is currently being tried. Uh, it is currently uh, not a preventative drug. Okay. And there are, in, there are clinical trials that are being taken right now. There's a reason why you have to have a, a prescription. And by the way, there is no proof, even in a letter that the president's doctors have sent, there is absolutely no proof that any of his doctors prescribe him this drug, even. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration have just warned against people taking this drug outside of hospital settings or clinical trials, as the drug can interact poorly with other medications, including, you know, asthma, heart arrhythmias, and it could cause death. Now, you could come up with a study and say, well, this study showed that it helped so-and-so people, or I know someone that took hydro and it helped them. But the bottom line is for every one of those studies, there's a study that said it did absolutely no good or could hurt someone. The bottom line is this. This drug is unproven. It is in clinical studies right now as we speak to as a preventative measure. And if you have the virus, it is an unproven drug, period. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. Am I saying maybe there's a chance that it could help you if you have the virus? Could it be a preventative drug? I guess that's possible, but right now it's unproven, and nobody can say for a fact that this is a drug. And by the way, the FDA has also warned against taking this drug, and obviously the president is not listening to that. But again, the point of the matter is is that it is an unproven drug for the coronavirus, period. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. And, you know, Fox News, Neil Cavuto went a little crazy yesterday because I'm watching this live and I'm watching this press conference and it was not shown on CNN. It was not shown on MSNBC, but it was shown on Fox News and Neil Cavuto right during his show. So after uh, this press conference, Neil Cavuto seemed like he was a little surprised. He was a little shocked. Here's what Neil Cavuto said live on Fox News right after this press conference. Have a listen to this. The VA study to which the president alluded wasn't a loaded political one. It was a test on patients there and those who took it in a vulnerable population, including those with respiratory or other conditions, they died. I want to stress again, they died. If you are in a risky population here and you are taking this as a preventative uh, treatment to ward off the virus or in a worst case scenario, you are dealing with the virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough. This will kill you. So here's what he's talking about. He's talking about one specific study. Here's what I, I will say to that. And again, I'm not just throwing out opinions or throwing out, well, this study said this. This is a fact. There is no evidence right now to support the fact that this is a preventative drug for the coronavirus. There are clinical trials that are being taken right now. And there needs to be more evidence. There needs to be more trials. We just don't have enough of that yet to say definitively whether this drug can help you. What I find very bizarre about this whole issue is that we just learned about this, that the president has been taking this drug uh, yesterday for the last week and a half. The doctor wrote out a letter. The president's doctor wrote out a letter. In that letter, he said that basically 
that the negatives do not outweigh the positives or the risk. But he also never said he prescribed the drug to the president. If he prescribed the drug, I would assume that it would have been in that letter. It was not in that letter. It sounds to me, and by the way, we don't know for a fact, and I am not going to take the president's word for it, that he actually is taking this drug. All we know for a fact is that he had a conversation with his doctor. There is no evidence to support the fact that the doctor prescribed this drug. The president is claiming he's been taking this drug for the last week and a half, but no doctor or anyone has seen him well, take why, this drug. Why would he not have, have be taking this drug the last week and a half? Well, I'll answer you know, that. A, I'll, I'll it, answer it, that question. His, by, his, I'll answer his that. valet driver ended up with the virus. Mike Pence's staff ended up with the virus. The virus has been around him through through the White House for for you know, a couple of months, probably probably two or three weeks now, and he's he's, he's not taking this as well. You asked me why he, he's taking this as a as a prophylactic, Brian. He's taking this trying to not get the virus. He's taken this to prevent himself from, be, from being infected by the and virus. And there is no evidence. He's not, he is not. That actually, in India, it's considered a prophylactic. Okay, so, and, so, and, so, and, what, and what he said is there are, there are a lot of doctors out there, there are a lot of healthcare workers that have, that have been taking this drug as, again, a prophylactic, which means they are trying to prevent themselves from being in a position to okay. catch the virus. Okay. Not, not for those who have the virus. Okay. There, is a, there is a major difference there, Brian. Okay. Well, there's a major difference when you talk about a study in India and when you have the FDA and many other health organizations in this country that say this drug is not a proven drug as a preventative measure. It's just not, period. It's not. And there are clinical trials that are going on right now. Now, you ask me, well, why would the president uh, push this? Well, I ask you the question, why has the president been pushing this drug for months? Do you know the answer to that? Why? Because he thinks it works. Really? Yeah. So he yeah, thinks it, it works. It's been, it's been around for 50 years, Brian. So he, no, 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 no. So for, for, it for was, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not going to happen today, no, Brian. Yeah. It, 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 oh, that's it, not going to happen. It, it, no, 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 no. It's it not going to happen. It has nothing to do with the coronavirus. It's, it's been around for malaria, for rheumatoid arthritis. Nothing to do with the coronavirus. For, the, for lupus. The reason nothing that that, that particular drug was pushed by Donald Trump early is because it was inexpensive and it didn't have to go through a lot of stages of approval because it's been approved for various for Nothing to do with what you just said has literally zero to do with the coronavirus. Virus. Well, you that, just mentioned that, other, that, that, other that's, that's why he's been pushing it. Okay, but that has nothing to it's do not with the coronavirus. It's not because there's a major financial interest. So if it helps, okay. He wants this virus to be Listen gone. Listen to what you're as, saying. As, as, I am listening to what I'm saying. Okay. He, he wants this virus I to be gone. As, I am, as, as soon as humanly possible, just like I do. And people in his administration have had the virus. So he is trying to protect himself from getting the virus. And apparently a couple of doctors out there are telling him that that's okay to do. And is he morbidly obese as Nancy? We're going to get to that. As, as Dr. Nancy if Pelosi? You, we're gonna Do, get to Dr. That. Nancy Pelosi with we're, her PhD? We're going to get as, to that. As she claims that Donald Trump is morbidly obese and he shouldn't be taking this? No, he's not morbidly obese. But that doesn't that doesn't change anything, Brian. He is taking this as as a preventative measure from getting the virus, not from having the virus and making it worse. Okay, so we're going to get to that audio. Okay, we're going to get to that. I didn't want to talk about that right now, number one. Number two, the reason why I said no, 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 because you mentioned a bunch of diseases that have absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus. And this specific drug, in regards to this specific virus, there is not enough evidence to support the fact that it works as a preventative drug, and there is not enough evidence to support the fact that it even can help you if you have the coronavirus. Now, you can look at one study that says this, and then you can look at another study that says something else. The majority of doctors across the country right now are saying it's not proven yet, and we don't know enough information whether it, it, it can help you or even be used as a preventative it, 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 me- and a second, used as a preventative measure for this virus, period. That's it. And I'm not disagreeing with that, Brian. Are you angry that Donald Trump is taking this drug? Here's what I'm angry at. Here's what I'm right, what, I mean, is this, do you have a problem with this? Let me know. Clearly, there, there have been you a want to couple, answer that? I would imagine that his doctors are about as good as any doctors that, that there are in the country. First I of would all, imagine that, that the President of the United States has very good doctors. And if they have told him that, as he stated, the, the positives from this severely outweigh the risk. Now, if, if you have a pre-existing heart condition, then obviously this drug has been proven not to help you. It's not going to help every single person. It's not a panacea by any means. In this case, it is be, it is being used as a prophylactic to prevent himself from actually getting this virus, and he he is not susceptible to, to, to being adversely affected by those negative effects like someone else would be who has a, a severe heart condition. So Donald Trump is not in that, in that particular situation group of people. But as Neil Cavuto said, which was obscene, by the way, he's basically saying that, that if you are a, a susceptible or a high risk group, you are going to absolutely die of this no matter what. That is that is crazy. I'm shocked that he said that. And I'm disgusted that he said that. But Donald Trump clearly is not in that particular category. I'm sorry, did you ask me a question? Because I don't remember what the beginning of the, the question you asked me. 
What, what did you ask me again? No, I didn't ask you a question, Brian. Yeah, at the beginning you did. I just don't remember. Okay, we, we both forgot. All right, that's cool. All right, so coming up, uh, I want to play you now. Uh, you mentioned this a little bit. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, she was on Anderson Cooper's show earlier, uh, and uh, this was yesterday, and this was her reaction to Anderson Cooper asking her about what she thought about the president taking this drug. Here is her response. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientists, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So I, I, uh, I, I think that it's not a good idea. Okay, so she's half right on that. Uh, and I did a little bit of research on this myself to find out what the actual definition of where his weight is. Uh, he tipped the scales last I checked, uh, 243 pounds. The man is six foot three. He is obese, but uh, from a clinical medical perspective, he is not morbidly Not even obese. close to morbidly now, obese, Brian. Now, uh, but he's not in, in very good he's shape. 30. He's 30.4 BMI. 30.0 um, 30. Okay. is obese. So, so he's, he is barely over obese. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going by your definition. I'm going by Donald Trump's doctor's and their definition, not yours, theirs. And I'm, I'm all due respect, I'm going with their definition of what he is. 6'3", 243 right. pounds, he is officially obese. Now they're saying he's, I just said he was. he's not severe, he's not extreme, uh, and he would need to weigh somewhere around the lines of 320 pounds <laughs> to be morbidly obese. Now, now here's what's going on here. Here's what's going on here. This is obvious. And I don't necessarily agree with Nancy Pelosi calling him morbidly obese because it's not factually accurate. But here's what I will say. You have a president of the United States that has gone after her looks, gone after her dentures, gone after her Botox. These are things that the president has said over the course of the last several years. He's attacked her. He's attacked her on her looks. I don't agree with what she's doing, but I understand why she did it. She, it's a cheap shot at President Trump for the way he has treated her over the course of the last several years. And by the way, when I say treat, it has nothing to do with, uh, with uh, policy here. They've had plenty of disagreements on policy, but it is never okay – to go after someone's looks, just like I would say it's not okay to go after someone because they might be fat. Uh, it's the same thing. This is the state of politics that we're in right now. And again, while I don't agree with – well, it's not even that I don't agree with it. It's just not factually accurate. If he was morbidly obese, um, you know, I would say she said nothing wrong because the term morbidly obese is a clinical medical – name for somebody that weighs a certain, uh, you know, is at a certain number of weight. It's not like she went on television and she said he's a fat More Over the obese means, means you are about 100 pounds overweight. I understand that. And, and, we, and we, we, we discussed that. But uh, if she had said, Donald Trump, you're a fat pig, it would be at the level of the things that he said about her, going after her dentures, going after her Botox. These are some of the things that the president has said to her the it, last several years. So, yeah, and, and I don't have an issue with, with her attacking him in that regard. What I have an issue well, with... Well, I do. I, I do. mean, that, she, she's going... That, that's who she is. She's, I don't think she's... It, she she has no is, place in politics. She is going to do that. that that's what she's going she to do. She has no place in politics. Obviously, they've, they've gone back and forth for a while, and you're right. He has attacked her, so am, am I... think I, both are wrong. Am, am I, I'm not saying it's right, but am, am I surprised that she's attacking him? No. What I, what I have an issue with is she is now trying to play doctor when her and a lot of her constituents, or I mean, a, a lot of her, her colleagues have attacked Donald Trump for playing doctor. That, that is my issue. That, that, that is absolute hypocrisy here. She is, no, she is in no position to talk about what drugs Donald Trump is personally taking for himself. None, zero. She's so, not a doctor. Me, and, 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 she, and she can't do that. If, if, she, if she can do that, then Donald Trump can do it like, like he did before. And Donald Trump has, mul has said multiple times, I am not a doctor before he makes those statements. Nancy Pelosi, who didn't even make that, she didn't say, by the way, I'm not a doctor, but she just said, I don't think he should be doing that because he's the president of the United States and he's morbidly obese, okay. which is totally wrong. Right, Mor morbidly obese means you either are 100 pounds know, overweight we, we or you have that. a BMI of over 40. Donald Trump is at a 30.4. He is that. barely obese, okay. Brian. I, we by, 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 we already it, made that point no, 10 but, times. No, but by, by that lo probably once, but by that logic, I am nearly obese because I'm six foot three, 235 okay. we, pounds. We've made our point on that. We I both mean, agree on that, but here's where I disagree but, with but, you. But the issue is she is not a doctor, okay. and, and she is Obviously, trying to talk okay. like a doctor. All right, let's go with that. And, and that's okay for her to do, but it's not okay, okay. for Donald Trump to do, even after he announces okay. to, the, to the public that he isn't a doctor. All right, so let me respond to that about the uh, double standard of the you're not a doctor playing doctor. There are a lot of Republicans and Trump supporters like yourself that are saying, Nancy Pelosi, she's not a doctor. She can't make a statement like that. We could be here for weeks and months, and I could name you all the politicians and all the Republicans out there that think they are a doctor and think they know everything about this virus and talk about how we need to reopen because this virus is not doing this, 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 and this. But man, So my response is, while you don't like Nancy Pelosi because she's not a doctor, 
I could name you a gazillion people right now that are not doctors that think they're doctors and think they know everything there is to know about this virus and think we should have, hold on, would think we should have reopened everything two months ago. Okay. Well, Brian, nobody That's actually. A double standard. No, nobody. It's not even close. Nobody knows everything about this. You're virus. right. It's not close. Anthony Fauci no does know everything about this virus because this virus is novel. You. It's brand new. He knows more. And than the science, of course, he does. He knows more I, than I'm, politicians. I'm, I'm not a virologist. I'm not claiming to be. I'm then not. Why a are so many Republicans not, attacking I'm Dr. Not, Fauci? I'm not claiming to be. Then why are so many because, Republicans attacking because the they, doctors? Because they believe that the reaction is unwarranted. Oh, they believe. Okay. Well, yes. Okay. They believe. And, and science, and actually, science and data is basically showing that that is the case. Right well, now, Brian. well, I'm going to do the same if thing. This, you just if did. this virus was not was not basically basically spread rampant in a lot of nursing homes across the United States, okay. you would probably see 30 percent less deaths than you, than you are seeing okay, today. Okay, fair enough. But you just said Nancy Pelosi, you're not a doctor. She's not a doctor. With all due respect, you're not. A I'm doctor. not saying I'm a doctor. Okay, uh, she didn't say she was a doctor either. No, you're she, giving but, him, but, she but she, she, but she, she didn't say she wasn't a doctor. Donald Trump <laughs> goes up there and says he's not a doctor and then talks about say, it. What do you mean? No, I she, mean, Nancy, Nancy you Pelosi. You doing the same thing. No, we're not. Nancy Pelosi <laughs> did not announce the fact that she isn't a doctor. Brian, I'm going to pretty need a radio host just like you are. We, we have an I'm not a doctor. On, on, on I never on, said I was a doctor. On, on what's, and exactly. And you, and you like to just listen to the doctors and the experts because it's easier no, to No, it's do. not that I like it's, to. It's, it's a lot easier It's not to that do. I like to. I will absolutely 100% not listen to somebody like you when it comes to this virus. And I will 100% listen to someone who's a scientist or a doctor. This, this, very this, cl- this, cl- despite the that. fact that 36 million people now are unemployed. I'm not t- talking about unemployment and financial. You need to think you, about that. No, I, no. You, first do you know, do you know, not, right, right no, now? I'm not going to do that. Why I'm not going to discredit doctors and scientists about, because you're concerned about the so, economy. So here's I'm not going to do here's that. something that came out last week. There's an estimation that 1.2 million infants are going to die in the next year worldwide and b- because of the lockdown. And lockdown increases the mortality rate for an infant by about 45%. Okay, what so do you think about that? Well, or, the, or the fact that, that one in five kids that a question? In, in, the, in the United States. That is a question, yes. So you can go. Um, uh, store that one. But in one in five kids in the United States right now are not being fed enough food because their parents don't have the money to feed them. I don't even know what you're saying right now. So because of that, we should just open these everything are, up. No, these these, no are, sense these are the effects. Of the, and yes, we should be opening everything up. Okay, but, but I know that's your these opinion. Are, these are the effects of the lockdown opinion. and unemployment and losing your job and not being able to, to pay okay. for things for your family right. well, I'm for, talk for, to, for a number of okay. various you reasons. You can give Brian. me every financial problem that people are having right now, and you can talk economics all day to me. You're not going to change my opinion. I'm, I'm gonna, I want everything to reopen. And by the way, that's not going to happen. We're not going to have everything reopen at once anywhere. So I don't know why you keep saying that. It's going to be happening in phases. That's just a fact. Which makes okay? absolutely no well, sense. That's your because opinion. Because people, well, people who have been sitting at home are going to go all to the same places and congregate okay. there. Because I that's know, where they can go. I know you and some other so people. So the virus will spread faster. I know you and some other people uh, want everything to reopen tomorrow. Uh, that would totally discredit and it would be a failure because everything we've done to this point when it comes to social distancing would be a waste. I know you want everything to reopen, but I'm going to go back because you're the one who brought it up. You said, Nancy Pelosi, you're not a doctor. You disagree with your opinion. I'm going to say the same thing to you. We can disagree. That's fine. You could disagree with Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi never said she wasn't a doctor. And by the way, uh, never, she never said she was a doctor. Excuse me. Uh, there's a man that I want to talk about coming up next. Okay, Another coronavirus denier, so to speak. He has denied this virus from the start. He has called it a hoax. Guess where he is right now? He and his wife are in the hospital. They have coronavirus. And now all of a sudden, this Florida man has changed his tune. That's right. He is now uh, sounding a cautionary note about this deadly bug. That's right. Another person, we've heard from some of these pastors that uh, thought this was a hoax, and now some of them are dead because they held services and they died from the coronavirus. A man in Florida who called it a fake crisis. He said it was blown out of proportion. He's now in the hospital with his wife, and they are fighting for their lives. We'll take a quick break. We'll bring this up to you. Coming up next, you're listening to The Vegas Take right here. The all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Dawn. Every home has a to-do list. That leaky drain, bare spots on the lawn, repainting the trim. To finally get that to-do list done, call in a pro. Over the past 20 years, HomeAdvisor has connected over 100 million homeowners with trusted local pros. And during these times, we're making it easier than ever for great pros to join the HomeAdvisor network. For a limited time, home service businesses can get $200 in free advertising. Visit HomeAdvisor.com slash offer for details. That's HomeAdvisor.com slash offer. In uncertain times, you can be certain of this. The Salvation Army is serving those most in need with help and hope. 
thanks to your donations, the Salvation Army is helping those affected by COVID-19, those who've lost wages, who have no home to retreat to, who need food, help and utilities, and most of all, hope to see how you can continue to make a difference. Visit GiveWestwood.org. GiveWestwood.org. Hey, are you ready to quit smoking? There's a free Nevada resource here to help you. Just call 1-800-QUIT-NOW from the Nevada area. Special report, coronavirus update. The worst is not over economically. The message from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to Congress. I have said publicly, and I'll say again, I think the job numbers will get worse before they get better. So I just want to be very clear that I think that June will be a very difficult uh, quarter. Mnuchin says states that fail to reopen quickly enough run the risk of creating permanent economic damage. A federal appeals court has given a green light to New York State's June Democratic presidential primary. The court upholding an earlier ruling the primary must be held despite health concerns. The U.S. and Canada extend the border crossing ban to non-essential traffic until June 21st. Europe's Premier League reports six soccer players from three different clubs have tested positive for COVID-19 out of a sample of 748 players. On Wall Street, the Dow down 82. I'm Mike Moss. Every home has a to-do list. That leaky drain, bare spots on the lawn, repainting the trim. To finally get that to-do list done, call in a pro. Over the past 20 20- it's time to check the roads from the Letterman Road Traffic Studio. This report sponsored by CVS. Watch for slowing for a traffic hazard reported 95 northbound north of Boulder Highway. That may be debris on the highway. And also police activity to watch for. Charleston westbound at the 95. It's going to be at the underpass. And an accident now reported on Tropicana east of Paradise Road. It's going to be at University Center Drive. Use Flamingo as an alternate to get around. Skirt the slow and go. Get free one- to two-day delivery of prescriptions and store essentials from CVS. Visit online or call your local CVS to learn more. Restrictions apply. I'm John Michaels from the K-Dine Traffic Center. Right now, home sweet home has never been sweeter. Our homes are more important than ever, and finding people we trust to take care of them is just as important. For over 20 years, Home Advisor has been connecting homeowners with trusted local plumbers, electricians, roofers, and more. And now we're making it easier than ever for great pros to join the Home Advisor network. For a limited time, home service businesses can get $200 in free advertising. Visit homeadvisor.com slash offer 200 for details. That's homeadvisor.com slash offer 200. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit beefy, or even with type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Affordable term life insurance is out there. Call term provider and speak with Big Lou at 800-481-1458. 800-481-1458 or visit BigLou.com. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Parents, stop making excuses for your children and do something to help them for the rest of their lives. Sign up at Infinity the Math Institute for the best math tutoring in the country, the best online math tutoring in the world. We help struggling students excel and help successful students get to the next level. We are also here for parents, offering free seminars explaining what your students are learning, why it seems different from what you learned, and how you can help your child do better. We also offer super affordable SAT prep classes on Fridays before our super popular Friday fun nights where students and parents meet like-minded and driven families in a fun and constructive atmosphere. Coming to Infinity will be the best decision you've ever made for your child. Call 702-768-1777 or visit themathinstitute.com and tell them the Vegas Take sent you for a free assessment. That's 702-768-1777. Because at Infinity, you don't get more math problems, you get solutions. Sean Hannity, weekdays noon to 3 p.m. Now back to the Vegas Take on 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K-Dawn. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. We're going to open up the phone lines here in just a few minutes, 702-257-5396. And a reminder, Congresswoman Adina Titus will be joining us in hour number two. A lot to get to with her. You know, we've been talking about this you know, on the show before, at least I have. It's the fact there are some idiots across the country, across the world, frankly, but I'm focusing on the United States, 
There were some pastors that said that this was this coronavirus was a hoax. They continued to do their services. Now some of them are dead. We've talked about that. And I take no pleasure in somebody losing their life, even if they are a moron and, you know, even if they're dumb and they think this virus was a hoax from the beginning. I take no pleasure in saying they died, but I'm not going to sit here and say they didn't deserve it when they're out there holding services, putting everybody's health at risk, right, saying that this virus was a hoax. Well, I want, you, I want you to listen to this story because it's another one of those stories where somebody's a dope and they think that this virus is a hoax. A Florida man spoke out and believed that the coronavirus was a fake crisis. He also called it way blown out of proportion. Well, guess what, folks? Now he and his wife are hospitalized, fighting for their lives, and he's now sounding off a cautionary note about the deadly bug now that he's in the hospital. I want you to have a listen to this story. It's a report from WTPV in South Florida. Have a listen to this. Around this time last month, Jupiter rideshare driver Brian Hitchens was a self-proclaimed COVID-19 skeptic. I, I thought it was maybe the government was trying something that, and it was kind of like a, kind of like a, they threw it out there to kind of distract us. He has the Facebook post to prove it, downplaying the seriousness and sticking to his faith, saying God is bigger than this virus will ever be. I was, I get up in the morning and pray and, and trust in God for his protection. And I just leave it at that. It was like a, all, all these masks and gloves. And I thought that, it, you know, it looked like just a hysteria. Fast forward to this week, and Hitchens has a whole new outlook from his hospital bed at Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center as a coronavirus positive patient. I don't want to see anybody go through what I, what I went through. He recently took to social media about his experience, now encouraging people to take the virus seriously. This wasn't some scare tactic that anybody was using. It wasn't some made-up thing. This is a real virus that you've got to take serious. This hits even closer to home for Hitchens. His wife was admitted to the same hospital at the same time for coronavirus. You know, my wife's on the ventilator. She's been like that for three weeks. And it's it's tough. It's, it, it's sad. All right, so I'm glad this bird for brain. Uh, sadly, it, it took the coronavirus, him getting it and his wife getting it, for him to actually change his mind on this virus. His wife is fighting for her life right now. He's in the hospital. He thought God was bigger than the virus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, clearly God is not bigger than the virus. What would you say, say to the over 90,000 people that have died from this virus? I would imagine a good portion of them probably believed in God. Maybe some of them are good Christians. How about the pastors, some of them who have died from this virus? God is not bigger than the virus. You have to take care of yourself. This is not a hoax. It's not blown out of proportion. And it's another one of these situations where until it happens to you, then you see the light, right? I'm going to compare this to Dick Cheney. I can't believe I'm going to do it, folks, but I'm going to do it. For years, former Vice President Dick Cheney was anti-gay, anti-gay marriage, until he found out that his own daughter was a lesbian. Then he changed his tune until it happens to you. And all these dopes across the country that are calling this a fake virus, all these dopes across the country that are saying it's blown out of proportion or that the Democrats are doing it to get Donald Trump out of office, you dummies, some of you sadly are either dead or in the hospital like this man. I'm glad this man changed his tune because he's a perfect example of stupidity. And I give him credit although not much credit because now his wife could die because of his stupidity. He could have died because of his stupidity. So I'm not going to give him a lot of credit here. What do you think about people like this? Listen, if you think this virus is maybe blown out of proportion and it's not as serious as people make it out to be, all right, I'll have that conversation with you. But this is not a fake crisis, like this guy said. God is not bigger than the virus. Because if you go out there and you're hanging around someone that has the virus, chances are you're probably going to get it if you're not practicing social distancing. So I open up the phone lines at 702-257-5396. Again, that number, if you want to be a part of the conversation, it's 257-5396. And I ask you this question. What do you think about this Florida man who said this virus was blown out of proportion? What do you think about this man who called it a fake crisis and now his wife is on a ventilator fighting for her life? 
he, it appears to be he will make it through this, but he is still in the hospital as well. What do you make of these people throughout the country? They're dopes. That's what I say. What do you make of these people that think this virus is a fake crisis just to try to get Donald Trump out of office? I cannot believe that there are still people across the country that feel this way. Again, that number, 702-257-5396. 257-5396 is the number if you want to be a part of the conversation. Let's go to Ron S. Ron S., you are first up on the Vegas take. How are you guys? What's up, Ron? Hey, what's up, Ron? What's on your mind? Doing good. Hey, hey listen, Brian, um, I, I just wanted to say, number one, I, I don't think Mrs. Pelosi is really concerned about uh, Donald Trump's health. That's number one. Number two is what I was trying to discuss with you earlier to get your opinion and possibly debate you is that the, the Democrats do not, in my opinion, do not want an advantage of the right to experiment with 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 uh, with, uh, with the chloroquine. And, and well, that's not true. But Ron, Ron, with all due respect, but that's but what you just said is not true because there's plenty of trials going on, clinical trials going on right now. They're they're, they're really stubborn to move forward, Brian. They really are. They're In what way? They're, what do you mean? It's almost like they're over. Go ahead. Well, I, I don't understand what you're saying because there's a lot of clinical trials going on right now. Listen, I don't speak – hold on a second. I don't speak – hang on, Ron. I don't speak for Democrats, but here's – I can give you my opinion on what I think many of them are doing, which I believe in. It's that people shouldn't be taking certain drugs unless unless there's enough evidence to support. Now, if somebody is on their deathbed or they're gravely ill, there is not – okay, but hold on. Let me finish. Okay, but listen. on a ventilator. I understand. You know, possibly of not, that's all he has for possible to live. Now, his parents can't even say doctor. He can't, they can't even beg the doctor because they're desperate. Ron, there is not one. Okay, Ron, I'm sad that your friend is going through what he's going through, but let me be very is clear. A, let me a, just be very clear on this. Is that a Ron? They're not giving them the choice. Okay, then that is not Democrats. Okay, let me explain. That is not the Democrats' fault. Well, well, hold on, it, let me finish. If, if he's in a democratic, if I, if de- democratic governed state, okay. then it is it, the Democrats' no, fault. No, you're absolutely incorrect, and let me explain why. No, that's absolutely – okay, I want to be clear. What J.D. just said is absolutely not factually accurate. Here are the facts. Any doctor in any state, if somebody is in the hospital, that doctor can prescribe this drug whether the governor agrees with it or not. So that is not factually accurate. If you want to blame – hold on. If you want to blame somebody – Wait, if you want to blame somebody, let's be factually accurate. Don't blame the Democrats. Blame the doctor. Governor Steve Sislak, I'm going to go back to Nevada. Governor Steve Sislak, you're going to have to, well, guess what? You're going to have to ask. Okay, but here's where you're wrong, Ron, and I'm sorry your friend is going through this. Here's where you're wrong. That's a question you have to ask the doctor. For all you know, the doctor could be a big Republican. You don't know that. You cannot blame the Democrats for a doctor not doing everything he can to save your friend's life. I put all the blame on the doctor. That's where your anger should be. And I have no problem with anybody that is either on their deathbed or in grave danger with this virus taking every drug in the book to try to save that person. I have no problem with that. That's what happens. That's what happens. We take our political life whether we're Republican or Democrat, and we, and, and we, and we move with it. And Ron, I don't disagree. Ron, I oh, don't... No, Ron, Ron if, if, what, if what you're saying is actually happening, there is a law called the right to try law. And, uh, pr- pr- and pres- President Trump instituted it a couple years ago. So if, if this if this family if this family if, if this family is not able to make that decision for their you know for their apparently their son who has you know 20 percent chance or 20 percent lung capacity based on what it sounds like uh, the fact that he's on a ventilator that is actually illegal. So if, if that's what's going on, then that that doctor is is definitely committing a crime according to the right to try law. Okay, but but uh, again, we're talking about the doctor. And, I, and, and it's on the doctor. There's no Democrat in office that is saying that that doctor cannot prescribe that drug. That is a very important distinction. Now, I think we need to have some middle ground here. I want to get back to the calls at 257-5396, but we need some middle ground here. I think what Trump is doing is a little bit irresponsible. I think what that doctor is doing, you would probably call irresponsible, although I want more. In, I would like more information on the patient. We need some middle ground here, but there are clinical trials that are going on as we speak. Let's get back to the phone calls at 702-257-5396. Let's go to Mike. Mike, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? 
Not much. So I it is utterly ridiculous. We all know how many people have died from this virus. If you think those numbers are overblown, well, that's your opinion. Let's look at it this way. The virus... There, there's there, there's a, a group that is susceptible to it. There's an older population that if you get the virus, the, the chance the, the chance increases significantly that you're going to die from it. But what he's saying is that, at least with my take on what he's saying, is that if you are young and you are able to work and you can't work because or maybe you have your own business or whatever it is because of the virus, but the virus has a very small chance of killing you itself, being at home and not being able to do the things you want to do and lowering your quality of life can have just as much, if not more, mental mental stress that, that can adversely affect your life worse than the virus because the virus was not going to hurt you in the first place. you got to keep in mind, Brian, there's only a very small percent of the population that this virus is going to kill. I could get it. And be, and be asymptomatic, and it wouldn't adversely affect my life. But at the same time, me losing my job, me losing my insurance wouldn't just infect my life. It would infect my family's life and all my right. daughter's life. My response life. to that is this isn't just about you. I'm thinking about all the other people out there. Not no, you're not. You're, you're thinking about a small percentage of the population no, not, that, no, that, that is susceptible to this virus. No, you're not. not thinking about the other people that, that are losing their jobs, losing okay. their livelihood, well, and you're, you're not thinking about what's going to happen to them. That's not factually or, accurate. And that, that's, uh, no, that's no, completely that, actually, accurate. It is okay. factually there accurate. There are people that are not You're assuming that this virus Virus is going to affect people, okay. everyone, um, the, the exact same okay. way. And that's just not it's even funny. remotely close to being, again, it's, factually accurate. Okay, it's funny that you're saying I'm assuming and all these other things. That's all you, you do. Are. In fact, what you've done is you've taken what this guy said and you're assuming that if people are stuck in their homes, if I could just finish. No, I, I, gave, I gave my take on okay. it. I didn't right. assume. Right. There's okay. a huge okay. difference there. Okay, your take uh, and your opinion, you're looking ahead and you're coming up with some sort of reasoning. I don't know where you're getting that from, but the idea that people stuck in their homes, the death toll is going to be at the same death toll or even close to the same death toll as the coronavirus is utterly absurd. Well, here, here's a stat for you, Brian. For every 1% increase in unemployment in the United States, about 40,000 people are estimated to die. Right now we're looking at about 17.5%. I understand. What's the math? That's 700,000. Okay. That's, more, that's more than cancer kills every okay. year. I Brian. understand you want to throw stats and compare yeah, stat, if stats. I could just finish, if I could just finish, stats my, and doctors okay. that don't agree with you. Let me know when I could talk for ten seconds. Fine. Thank you. Um, so I understand you want to talk about stats and unemployment stats in correlation with people dying. I will uh, end that by saying people that are six feet underneath the ground don't care if they're unemployed. Seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Marcus. Marcus, you're next up on the Vegas take. Hey, what's up, Marcus? kind of going along with what J.D. is saying is you have a lot of simpletons where they only look at things in black and white saying, hey, you close down the economy, people will get better, but then they don't look at all the other uh, impacts, like people being inside, their immune systems are going to get worse, they're going to get bored, they're going to get depressed, and so forth. So are you saying that because if you are, are you saying that because people are bored, we should correlate that to opening up everything? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I'm talking about more things besides people being bored. I'm talking about uh, Well, you said bored, not me. You're saying that people should use that You're the one who brought that up. You're the you're saying that we should use being boredom as a factor to opening up the economy. Do you realize how ridiculous you sound? Unemployment, depression, unemployment, you're picking one point. Well, then don't bring it up. Then don't put, then don't use the term boredom then, because that's a, if you want to take that back, that's fine. But be, I'm sorry, just because you're, excuse me, just because you're twiddling your thumbs, that shouldn't be a reason for Sislak opening everything up. That's absurd. So you're the one who brought up people being bored, not me. You're absurd, sir. Uh, the reason Sislak showed everything up is because our positive testing rate yeah. it has dropped below 7%. It was 7.5%. We only have 25% of the cases in Nevada of the 7,000. Only 25%, actually less than 25%, are active right now. There's only been 350 deaths. I mean, Brian, the, right now we've got 400,000 people unemployed for every for every one for for every single person that's died of the coronavirus, if they actually died of the coronavirus, not not with and by, there's a huge difference there. But if that's the case, then we've had almost one thousand two hundred Nevadans lose their jobs because of that. I understand you point. want to talk I mean, about I mean, people I mean, losing their jobs. No, I mean, do you understand that, that math? Like, do you actually get that? Uh, yeah, I, I get a lot of and, things. And at the same time, and things. at the same time, we don't have a state income tax. We don't have a food tax. We don't really have a way. We don't have a diversified economy right. like, like like a Tesla, for example, isn't here. You know, bringing us tax revenue for sales tax revenue. We don't have a diversified economy, and and eventually we're we're, we're basically we put ourselves in a situation right. where we have to drain our rainy day fund, which was four hundred one million dollars, and we're gonna have a hard time paying Can for police officers. 
fire department, you know, very important member members of just right. maintaining. I, I want to go back to the, the phone economy calls. And, and and not. What, if you're up? so concerned about the economy yeah. and you're so concerned about small businesses, how many small businesses have you gone to in the last week? How many small businesses and restaurants have you supported in the last week? I've supported plenty of them. That's fantastic, Brian. I'm asking you, if you're so concerned about the economy, what local businesses have you supported that have recently just opened up? Have you been out there? Have you gone to these local businesses? Are you supporting them? Because I am. I can name you about 20 businesses that I've spent money on in the last week alone that have recently opened up. Not just in this state, but other states. Uh, Creme de la Creme, my daughter's daycare. So that's it. Couple of restaurants. All right, seven zero two two five. But I have a family. You don't. It's a little okay. different. All right. Well, that would give me more reason that, to be that, out there. I'm just saying that that doesn't mean. And, and what is what is me putting 20, 20 to thirty bucks every couple of days? Because these, you, how, how is that well, going to help? Uh, because you, you want to talk about you want to answer that? I'll talk about supporting small right. businesses. You ask giving them a question. platform on our show. We've got forty thousand listeners a week. Giving them a platform on our show to talk about their business and, and advertising it to our listenership. That, and that we, we could certainly do that. Small businesses are always welcome to call in. We will We've always absolutely. Them. We could definitely do that. I'm just saying you, you speak from uh, purely an economy and financial standpoint. I think I look at things a little bit differently than you look at things. Let's see what the, the callers think. 702-257-5396. Let's go to James. James, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, James? Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, so what we're talking about... Why can't we do this responsibly? I mean, if we get everybody to wear masks and gloves and use hand sanitizer, social distance, and clean the place that we're going, sure, we aren't going to have the same capacity, but, you know, what's wrong with opening some up some? No, I agree. Listen, I, I just, James, I just want to say, uh, hang on the line, James. Uh, I'll let you make your next point. I just, I just want to say that I agree with you. I'm totally okay with some of these businesses opening up in phase one. And by the way, so is the governor. We're in phase one right now. Hopefully, we'll be in phase two soon if it's deemed safe. I have no problem with that, James. James, do you know what my biggest issue is? The people that think everything should open up tomorrow. Yeah, they should. think 20,000 20, people should be in the T-Mobile arena, not practicing social distancing, watching a Vegas Golden Knights game. I have a problem with what? the mayor. Hold on. I have a problem with the mayor saying that the entire strip, including all casinos, should be allowed to reopen tomorrow. James, I'm with you. I want small businesses to open in these phases. I just don't want everything to open up tomorrow. Do you see where I'm going with that, James? James? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah. You know, and again, that, that, that's all going to be variable based on demand, Brian. Go ahead, James. Yeah, I'd say, hey, and let's support our small businesses. Thank God Mama Maria's Mexican restaurant is open, if I can say that. Sure, sure. And, and, and about what's happening to us while we're, you know, uh, well, at, at home. I mean, I've gained 20 pounds, and it sucks. So, but on the other hand, I'm going on the way to, I'm uh, delivering meal, uh, food for needy seniors. Oh, that's, that's nice of you. Shout out to Helping, helping Hands of Vegas Valley. So Good for you, James. You do something. Well, James, thank you for doing that and helping our community. We really do appreciate you, and, and thanks for calling in, and, and thank you. You're, uh, I know there are a lot of modest people out there, but you're one of those heroes out there. You're doing your part to, to help others, and we hope you stay safe, James. We hope you lose that weight, by the way, too. Take some jogs, uh, eat some healthy food. Well, but, he's uh, been eating a lot of Mexican food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. as, he, as he stated. Yeah. I'm James, sure it's delicious. <laughs> just, just go to the Apollo CrossFit gym. You lose some weight there. <laughs> well, look, there's no question that – you know, uh, during this quarantine, a lot of these workout facilities are closed. A lot of these sporting sports and that sort of uh, thing. Pools. But there are still ways that pools, you can. gyms. There are still ways, though, that you can uh, remain. Well, you know that al alcohol consumption is up. Well, right. uh, my uh, people are, are getting are, are all pretty much gaining weight collectively at this point, because when you are bored, one thing you do, at least when I'm bored, I think I'm, I'm like a lot of people out there. I watch more TV. I eat more. I, I, I mean, you know, when you're bored and you don't have a lot to do, you know, there, it, it does change your, your thought process about how you're going to handle your day. Well, my, my and thing this is and this is boredom that, that no one has asked for. No one has no one. No one has said, you know, I want to be bored for the next three months and get paid by the government to live my life. You know, this 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 is a result of fear from a virus that is killing a small, very, very small percentage of the population. And in some cases, it's not even killing them. All right. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Trump supporters in New York heckling a local TV reporter, a local TV reporter who at once had the coronavirus, people without masks on that are attacking uh, this guy for really no reason. The guy is there. He's not even from CNN or MSNBC. Even if he was, uh, that would still be inappropriate. But this guy, 
is in a crowd of Trump supporters. It was uh, more of a Trump rally, even though they say it was, you know, reopened New York rally, which is absurd when you look at all the cases in New York. But that's beside the point. Here's a man who just wants to cover as a news story this protest. And if these people had any intelligence, they'd go up to him and, and show some respect and then give him some sound bites so their story could get on the air. Instead, you're not going to believe, or maybe you will, the way these Trump supporters treated this reporter who, again, once had the coronavirus. These people are not wearing masks. I saw the video of it. And we are going to play you the audio of this. And we're going to talk about the dangers. The dangers of what some of these people are doing, not only not practicing social distancing, but attacking TV reporters and heckling them, and Donald Trump praising them for it. That's right. He's not denouncing it. He's praising these reporters, uh, these, these, these Trump supporters, for the way they're treating some of these reporters. We're going to cover this story when we come back from the break. You're not going to believe it. We have the audio to prove it. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. It's the Vegas Take on 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDOM. Now more than ever, we need companies that have our back. Homey just launched in Las Vegas and is already saving us thousands in real estate fees, and now they're helping our community in partnership with United Way of Southern Nevada. For each home bought or sold with Homey, they are donating $500 to the United Way to provide rent and mortgage assistance. And if you have to sell your home because of COVID-19, Homey will rebate their $2,500 listing fee back to you. Text JD to 88588 to buy or sell with Homey. Homey really does have our back. Listen to the Texas Corners Bible Church every Saturday night at 11 p.m. and Sunday night at 10 p.m. on 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDON. Are you looking for smoke-free housing? Visit GetHealthyClarkCounty.org for a list of 50,000 smoke-free units available. Join Coach Harvey Hyde and Chuck Hayes Saturday evenings from 9 to 10 p.m. for Trojan Football Report, presented by South Point Hotel and Casino, here on 101.5 FM and 720 AM, KDWN, where Las Vegas comes to talk. Hey, it's Lee Goldberg of the GCI Guys at Realty One Group. Do you know anyone that's looking to buy a home, sell a home, rent, move from California? If so, give them my number, 702-902-3029. All listeners of the Vegas Take get a grand in your hand back at closing. Hometown heroes, veteran, military, police, teacher, nurse, I'm giving you two grand back. That also goes for hospitality and casino employees. Free use of a moving truck for a day, six free your runs home, home for security. Sean Hannity. KDWN Las Vegas, KKLZ HD2 Las Vegas, a Beasley Media Group station. Special report coronavirus update. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says the U.S. may need to put more money into economic recovery. What Congress has done to date has been uh, remarkably timely and, and forceful. I think we, you could say the same about what we've done. I do think we need to take a step back and ask over time, is it enough? And we need to be prepared to act further, and I would say we are if, if the need is there. Senator David Perdue says the relief program goes too far. The unemployment premium is keeping people from coming back to work. There are employers in my state who really want people to come back to work, but they're saying, no, why would I do that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this premium right now, and then I'll call me back in a couple of months. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin warned the lawmakers of permanent economic damage if states wait too long to reopen. All states are now at some level of reopening their business activity, which had been shut down. I'm Mike Moss. President Trump starting taking a combination of hydroxychloroquine and zinc, but researchers are warning that drug cocktail is not a preventative. Dr. Joseph Rahimian at NYU Langone's hospital looked back at coronavirus patients who received zinc along with hydroxychloroquine and an antibiotic. Looking at what happened with the addition of zinc and how those groups compared, whether they received zinc or did not receive zinc. They found no difference among patients who received only hydroxychloroquine, but there was an improved survival rate among those who received zinc. He cautioned that it requires a lot more study. So it's an observational study where we look back. Dr. Rahimian said many people read too much into their findings. Both the right and the left seem to jump to conclusions on studies that, in my opinion, aren't accurate. Steve Kastenbaum, New York. New York Governor Cuomo says the Albany area of upstate New York tomorrow becomes that state's seventh region to reopen. The Dow down 80. I'm Mike Moss. It's time to check the roads from the Leonard Road Traffic Studio.
This report sponsored by CBS. Watch for slowing for the crash reported today away north of Elkhorn. You can use Buffalo as a good alternate. Get around that way and avoid slowing in. Also an accident on Tropicana east of Paradise Road. That way you can use Flamingo instead. That's a good alternate for you there. And then road work continues with utility crews on the job on Windmill Lane east and westbound, slowing between Rainbow and Jones Boulevard. Get free one- to two-day delivery of prescriptions and store essentials from CVS. Visit online or call your local CVS to learn more. Restrictions apply. I'm John Michaels from the K Don Traffic Center. It's open enrollment season, and MediShare is the Christian healthcare sharing ministry that saves most families about $500 a month. Google MediShare and see if it's a fit for you. MediShare, healthcare you can believe in. Hey, Chuck, I bet a lot of people don't know that you started Dollar Loan Center right here in Nevada. True story. Over 20 years ago with just two employees in a 400-square-foot office on East Sahara in Vegas. Most people think since there are Dollar Loan Center locations everywhere that we're some big national corporation. I did. Nope, not at all. We're proud to be a Nevada-born company and give back more to our local communities than any alternative lender I know. We're one big family at the DLC. We employ hundreds of Nevadans, have over 250,000 active customers who count on us every day. Trust me, I know how lucky the community truly is to have DLC. That was Chuck, founder of Dollar Loan Center, based right here in Nevada, where you can get up to five grand in just minutes. We have over 50 locations, and our friendly staff are ready to help. You can also apply over the phone or online at don'tbebroke.com. Licensed by Nevada Financial Institutions Division. Customer must meet minimal loan qualifications. Review loan qualifications. Visit us at don'tbebroke.com. Certain limitations may apply. Loans are subject to approval. Have you been lied to, lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine? Hi, I'm Inc. Magazine best-selling author Brett Kitchen. And if you're over 55 with an IRA or 401k, I want to give you a free copy of my new book, Wealth Beyond Wall Street, because according to Time Magazine, Wall Street's 401ks have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I set enough. And since then, I discovered a way to grow money, potential double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Wealth Beyond Wall Street now to get your free book and talk to a special to discover this little-known strategy to get potential double-digit growth during good years and never lose in the next market crash. Call 800-436-8181 to discover this asset that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney use to grow wealthy. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call 800-436-8181. 1-800-436-8181. That's 1-800-436-8181. 101.5 FM, 720 AM. k the Talk of Las Vegas. The opinions of the hosts on KDWN are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of yeah, this station, really its management, or Beasley Media. That's much more. That's much Hello, more everyone. Tell me about your podcast. President Sounds great. Trump, the greatest president in the history of presidents. And the only show I listen to is the top rated show, Sharp and Shapiro. They are the best. Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Oh yeah, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could be with us. Uh, I had to take a little bit of a long break there. I had to take some hydro, some Oreos. That's what I did. Not, not hydroxy. Very, two very different things. You have to be very careful. It's hydro, and then there's hydroxy. Hydroxy is the drug. Hydro, what they put in Oreo cookies. So you have to have a distinction there. Although JD did eat all my Oreo cookies last week. He had a lot of hydro last week. Isn't that right? You did, you did chow down my Oreos. Yeah, I think I had like seven. You did not, yeah, you did I, I not think, have seven. I think, I, is, I, think I, I collected seven Oreos. Stein, is there any truth there, to the to the fact? You there, was like one, there was probably one-fifth of the package left when I got into it. Stein, can you but help I me out on this off, one? And Please. I smiled after the fact. I, I had three Oreos in there, and they were all gone in a week. I you, think I actually left the wrapper on your the, the, the empty package on your bed. You did. You also didn't throw it away. Then they went stale. Because as you know, with a package of Oreos, you have to reseal the package. All I know, after every day of the show, there's always a little area that has crumbs and bottle caps. And it's, J.D., it's always your area. It's always your area. I have to clean up well, after you like probably, I'm your mate. You're probably going to see some remnants from my, my Quest double chocolate chip protein cookie that I've been eating I, 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 this I, morning. You have some weird habits, my friend. That's all I'm going to say. I do, too. But you eat. No, I think you're the most normal guy ever. 
Well, that's ridiculous. That's obviously not true. No. But but I will say, if I went into your place of uh, of living in your area, I, I would not uh, chow down on all your Oreo cookies. I would have left at least four. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, I forgive you. It's okay. I accept your apology. Uh, I'll tell you, people. a lot of Trump supporters are not apologizing for some of their behavior when it comes to the way they treat members of the media. There's a local sto- uh, a story in New York where a local TV reporter who once actually had the coronavirus wanted to cover uh, uh, open up New York uh, protest. These were all Trump supporters. There's a video of it. They're wearing their Trump hats, their Trump shirts. They were so nasty to this guy for no reason. I want you to listen to this audio, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Here it is. I'm just trying to get by on the sidewalk. That's all. No, you shouldn't be here. You fake news. You stop. You stop airing the Trump briefings and you keep airing Cuomo briefings. Go home, you fake news. Go home. You are the enemy of the people. You are fake news. You are the enemy. We all know it. You are fake news. We know that you're liberal tender. We know you want to keep your job. We get it. You're not getting advertising dollars in right now. Tell the truth, Kevin. Come on. Fake news is not essential. Fake news is not essential. All right, I'm going to be very clear on this. What I've said it before, I'll say it again. These are some of the dumbest people in society. Not Here's why. True. Uh, okay, uh, so you don't think news is essential? You don't think um, the media is essential? No, I'll let you finish. Let's break down what they I, said. I will let you finish. Okay, well, let's break down what they said in that okay. audio. First of all, some stupid dope of a woman is saying that you don't air the Trump briefings, but you air Cuomo. Last I checked, this is a local TV reporter in New York City. Of course they're going to air the Cuomo briefings, you dope. That's number one. Number two, fake news is not essential. Fake news is not essential. First of all, the media is essential. Now, if you don't agree with a network, that's your problem. This is a local TV report. This isn't a CNN reporter. So why, hold on, so why hold are we on. actually not in the studio for a This essential? isn't a CNN reporter. I'm curious okay, why that's that That's a completely different subject. This isn't a CNN reporter. This isn't an MSNBC reporter, because I know Trump people just hate the truth. This is a local TV reporter doing his job. And they are attacking him with their words. They're getting right in his face. They're not wearing masks. Again, there was a middle finger as well. Yeah. These are some of the dumbest people in society. This guy did absolutely nothing wrong. He's doing his job. What is a TV, a local TV reporter supposed to do? I'll tell you why, because I've been in the news business for 10 years. His news director gave him an assignment and said, hey, there's a reopen New York City Mm -hmm. protest. We need you to go out there, get some video. Get some sound. Sound meaning get a couple interviews. All this guy did was show up with his camera and did his job. He didn't harass anybody. He might have asked a few people, hey, can I ask you a few questions? That might be the worst thing he did. And it is completely unnecessary, and it is disgusting the way these people treated him. And I say it again, some of the dumbest people in society. I'll, I'll I'll tell you what's disgusting, Brian. The fact that there are members of the media right now. What does that have to do with this guy? That are that are not you can just interrupt me like that? You can just do that? I don't know if you could do that. Okay, okay. that's fine. Well, why are you talking about other no, members no, of the media? You, go. I was, you can just interrupt me like that. That's okay. fine. Well, you're deflecting again. I, 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 actually, I'm not deflecting at all, Brian. I don't know why you're being you so aggressive inter- towards you, me. You interrupt me out of nowhere. We're, we're talking about a local... And you get mad at me right. interrupting you all the time. I hope you will all talk... Right, guys, all right, stop it, both okay. of you. Okay, I, hope, I hope we will talk about this specific issue that we are talking about. That's why. That's what I'm asking you about. This specific TV reporter... This specific issue. Now, if you want to talk about other members of the media, go ahead. It just has nothing to do with this. Go ahead. Well, they obviously thought that he was with CNN or MSNBC. Or th- they didn't know exactly who he was with, clearly. Obviously. So that's part of it. That, well, being, that would justify it. Yeah, yeah that definitely justifies I'm, I'm not, treating people I'm like not that. saying it justifies they, it. They did know who he was because they were talking I, I feel like I'm in, I'm in a, a studio with Chris Wynn and Brian Shapiro right well, now. Well, because all time. you have to do is say that giving people the that, middle that's finger and like shouting right. down uh, all right. a report all right. is, and, anyways, is, is wrong. That's okay. all you have to okay. say. That that being said, people are really mad right now at the media, and they're very, and they're they're even more mad that the media is getting paid their full salary to to try to divide the country right now and put the blame on President Trump for this. And they're wondering why they can't go to work, but the media can. And in the process, the media is is trying to blame this on the president. And at the same time, specific members of the media, in their opinion, are trying to keep them out of work through fear mongering. That that is why, in my opinion, that they are that they said the things they said. They're thinking to themselves, okay, why why can't I go to work and you guys can go to work? You can get paid. I can't get paid. Okay, 
but at the same time, all you're doing is trying to place blame on the president for something okay. that, that uh, wasn't his couple, fault, as well as as continue this lockdown. Okay. In so a place like now, granted, New York, New York City is, is a whole different animal, and you can shake okay, your head all you want, Stein, but but New York City is a whole different animal. That doesn't make. I mean, obviously, the the, the, the well, no, because the situation, you're the doing situation, what I thought you is, you're deflecting from. I'm not situation. deflecting. No, I said obviously they thought that he was with a, it, a different that media outlet. Right. Okay. So can I respond to what you just said? First of all, Trump supported these idiots, and that's what they are. They're idiots. I don't think they're idiots at all. Okay. Well, you're right. I, think, on, I think they're now. out of work. Let me finish I now. think they're out of work. Let me finish and they're now. angry because okay. they think they should be in work. Okay, I get your point. And, and the media they're right defending now. defending their horrible behavior. I understand. I don't people, think it's horrible behavior. Oh, really? what, what so, are, flipping off, so flipping off a local TV reporter is okay to you? That's okay I to have, you? Under those circumstances, I have absolutely no problem with right, whatsoever. There's no point the in that. That's fine. The reporter also himself had coronavirus, and he was very nervous because people without masks were in his face. Okay. And he was scared. And they absolutely, J.D., knew where he was from. Because, first of all, when you go out in the field, you, you identify yourself. You of wearing, course you have they a, knew who he was. a white was. flag or a jacket or something and like that. And he did. They also were making comments to the effect of, I used to like your, t- I used to like your TV station, but now I don't. Right. So, they, of course, they knew it. So, also, I would think it's an assumption to say that all these people are out of work. We don't know that. Yeah, we don't know that either. But here's what we do know. They flipped this guy off. They were extremely rude to him. They, uh, a couple of them got in his face. Uh, they said uh, the media, uh, fake news is not essential, and you did what I thought you were going to do, and in a way you defended their behavior. And all I, all I think any, any reasonable person that's not biased would say is, you know what, I don't support that behavior. You shouldn't be flipping off the media. You shouldn't be saying that you know, they're not essential. Uh, you shouldn't be you know, criticizing them for airing a Cuomo press conference. That's all. Now, uh, if you want to go into detail about why they're upset, okay, fine, I'll hear that out. But to defend this type of behavior, which you are, you see nothing wrong with, with the way they treated this man, to me, is ridiculous. Again, they think that the media is dividing the country instead of uniting it and okay. trying to get over this Well, virus. they're dopes. They, they think well, they're dopes. dopes. I think they're right, actually. Okay. The, the media is okay. taking an opportunity right now to divide the country because it is an election year and they're doing whatever okay. they can, specific members of the media are doing right. whatever they can to put the blame on President Trump for this, for the jobs lost and the deaths. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, no, no point in finishing that conversation. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we have Congresswoman Dina Titus. A lot to get to with her. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take. Right now, Home Sweet Home has never been sweeter. Our homes are more important than ever, and finding people we trust to take care of them is just as important. For over 20 years, Home Advisor has been connecting homeowners with trusted plumbers, electricians, roofers, and more. And now we're making it easier than ever for great pros to join Home Advisor Networks. For a limited time, home service businesses can get $200 for free a local TV station is not providing. A local TV station is covering a protest in their community. Like when Fox 5 went to cover your protest, would you give them real finger so they get out of here your fake news? You're covering the protest. No, you don't get it. I told you it's totally a good idea. Four months from totally the comfort of your own home, even if you have right. zero computer yeah, only the, experience. Right. Republicans are pissed off. What did that guy do? What did that guy do? How is that guy dividing What did that guy do? What did that guy do? How is that guy dividing Take the free career evaluation today. Live online classes meet just twice a week. It's not rocket science. It's my computer career. You don't care about anything. Yeah, that makes sense. Mark Levin, weekdays 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now back to the Vegas take on 101. 5 FM, 720 AM, KDON. Defending people of that behavior is outrageous. Outrageous. All right, we're back, Brian. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us on a Tuesday. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on in the world, ladies and gentlemen. A lot. One of these casinos is going to open. We're in phase one right now. we got an election coming up, not just locally, but we also have a, an election for the presidency of the United States in November, and the lady joining us on the line right now, we always love it when she takes some time, that is Congresswoman Dina Titus. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Hey, what's up, dear? Well, thank you for having me. I'm doing all right. I was in Washington for a couple of days last week to vote on the new relief bill, but I'm back in Las Vegas. Glad you're, you're down, like everybody. Glad you're, you're back here, Congresswoman, because well, you know, we, we, I certainly think you're doing a fantastic job. A lot to get to in a short period of time. Let me, let me start by the, the, the big el- pink elephant in the room and, and get your thoughts on this situation with Stephen Horsford. When you first heard this story, what was your first reaction? What do you make of it, and do you think he should resign? Well, Stephen called me to give me a heads up about it, and I respected him for doing that, and I 
and I appreciated it. He says it's a personal matter. It doesn't involve his professional office or anything, and he wants to see what they respect his privacy so he can work it out with his family, and that's what I'm doing. And I, and I respect that, and I understand that. I'm glad he did that to you. With that being said, do you have faith that he didn't use any of his own people to help this woman and didn't use taxpayer-funded money? I mean, is that is that what you're saying? Because I would imagine that's what he's saying. Well, uh, there's an ethics commission that it, within the Congress, and if they think that something was done wrong, I'm sure they'll look into it. All right, fair enough, Dina. We, we appreciate you uh, uh, talking about that. I want to talk to you about Sisolak's Phase 1. What are your thoughts on this? And I've heard you know, different uh, opinions on when these casinos are going to open, that the governor might ha not have the authority anymore, that it might be the Gaming Commission. Your thoughts on Phase 1 as a whole, and uh, what do you think about these casinos and the Gaming Commission now more involved than ever? Well, you know, the whole strip in downtown are in my district, so it's very strange to ride down there and see them all closed. I have great respect for Steve's uh, policy, the governor. He has followed science and health advisors, not politics. And that was a hard decision for him to make because so much of the state depends on travel and tourism. But I think you have to be smart. Doing it in phases is the way to do it because you don't want to open everything up too quickly and have a relapse and have those numbers go up like they have in Georgia, for example. Right. Because people aren't going to want to come if they don't feel safe here. Sure. And that will make our recovery take longer and uh, be more difficult and more expensive. I agree with you. We have to do this in a safe, you know, effective way where people feel safe. I couldn't agree with you more. With that being said, you have a lot of information that maybe, you know, someone like me, the general public, they don't have. Do you have any sense of when we might see the first gambling casino open up uh, in Las Vegas? Do you have any sense of when that might happen? Well, I know that the big uh, casinos have been working on their own plans. I've seen the WIN plan, the MGM plan. Those will go before the Gaming Control Board, the Gaming Commission. I think that's appropriate. Uh, I think that workers have to be involved in that planning. And culinary is certainly going to have to have a place at the table. Uh, Steve has said that phase one will last through the end of the month. We won't be opening for Memorial Day weekend. But uh, maybe after that, if our numbers stay flat, and they have flattened uh, pretty regularly for the last couple of weeks, you can see it starting to open, hopefully, by 4th of July. So, Congresswoman, in Nevada, there's roughly 400,000 that are unemployed, you know, due to this coronavirus pandemic. Yeah. And a lot of them are, are, are well, obviously, they work in the casino industry. Some of them have received their unemployment benefits that they were promised an extra $600 a week. Do you have any idea what percentage of Nevadans at this point have not received unemployment benefits? I, I don't have that number, uh, but I can tell you that they're working very hard to try to get those benefits out. And Nevada's not the only state experiencing this. We had an out-of-date uh, computer system and never have seen such a flood of people claiming unemployment. It's just put so much pressure on the system. But in the bill that we passed at the federal level, there was funding for the states to hire more people and upgrade, and that's what we've done. So the people are starting to get their benefits, and the main thing to realize is they get frustrated, and we get about 100 calls in our office every day about this and small business loans, is that once you get it, and I know you need it now, it is retroactive. It doesn't just start at that point forward. It goes back to the beginning of your unemployment. So you're not losing that money. And now just this week, they've rolled out the rules for how if you're on the gig economy or a, a contractor or self-employed, you can start to apply and get the funding. Never in the past have those people qualified for it because they don't pay into that system, but now they will also get the benefit. And it's just a matter of having enough people on the phone, getting that computer system up and running. We've appropriated the money. It is there. Uh, six to six hundred dollars extra on top of the unemployment you get from the state and the extended period of time. That's not going away. It's just the mechanics of getting it out. And I know the governor's office has made this a priority. If you're just joining us, she is Congresswoman Dina Titus, representing us right here very well in the state of Nevada. Now, speaking of money, Dina, uh, let's talk a little bit about something you've been working on, and a lot of people have. That is this $3 trillion care, CARES Act that just passed. Can you talk to us a little bit about that, and what does this mean for your constituents, those uh, here in Nevada? 
Yes, we passed the first CARES Act uh, just several weeks ago. It seems like an eternity now. And that put um, the original $1,200 in everybody's pocket and set up that unemployment system that I just described and also uh, set up a system for small businesses to get grants to, it's, they call it a loan, but you don't have to pay it back, so it's in effect a grant to keep people on the payroll and cover their health insurance. This bill that we went back and passed just last week is more about long-term sustainability. It's uh, called the HEROES Act, and it's aimed at heroes on the front line. Health care workers, firefighters, policemen, and teachers are, are all essential employees, and so we've created an essential workers uh, hazardous pay fund that has $200 billion in it. There's $75 billion for testing and tracing, which is what we need so we can track this virus, and that will help us to open up uh, sooner. There are also some OSHA requirements for people who are in these hazardous positions so that they know that they're safe to go to work. There's the more direct payments for individuals that come straight to them, another $2,000 a person. There's some housing assistance. We hear a lot about that here in Las Vegas, need assistance with rent and mortgages. That's uh, in that bill. And then the biggest chunk of it is to go to state and local governments to make up for what they've had to spend on the virus and also lost revenue. Because if you think about Nevada without sales tax or gaming tax, our budgets are going to just be crashing. The state's already talking about 4% cut across the board. They're using the rainy day fund. The city and the county are talking about cuts, a billion dollars at the county, the school district, the university. So that money will help to wow. make up some of that lost revenue. You mentioned the rainy day fund, which was you know, roughly $401 million for the state of Nevada. And, and Governor Sislak did just announce, uh, and last week, you know, the, a fiscal state of emergency was declared, but he did announce that that will be, you know, drained, as you stated. Where, where will that money be going specifically? Well, they will use it to fill some holes in the provision of essential services. You know, the state covers a lot of the Medicaid, a lot of the education money, some of the highway infrastructure money, prison system. I'm sure that his whole staff is looking at where the most critical points are, and he'll work with the legislature to use the money for that. Mm -hmm. There have been times when there's more money in the rainy day fund, less money in the rainy day fund. This is exactly the kind of situation that you have that fund for to right. help you when things sure. go bad. Absolutely. Uh, I want to ask you about Joe Biden, but before I do that, I just want to go back to one other thing that you mentioned because I think it's really important. There are some casinos in Vegas that have, are planning on opening at the end of this month. Um, so you had stated, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you think it's a possibility that maybe July 4th could be the date, which would mean, obviously, these casinos wouldn't be open in June. Is that kind of your timeline? And I, I'm not trying to pinpoint you to give an exact date here, but you said July 4th. Is there any chance? Because some people think that some of these casinos will be opening up later this month. But from what I'm hearing from you, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. Is that a fair assessment? Well, you're seeing them open in phases. And when I say July 4th, that's just the next big holiday and, you know, kind of landmark. I don't have any reason to believe that's any kind of official date. I just think that'll be the next holiday we look toward. But you are already seeing some of the casinos opening up restaurants inside mm -hmm. the casinos. And then you see some of them now, they're going to give free parking. They're going away from that paid parking. Right. So I think they're rolling it out little at a time when they'll be open and, and uh, operating to the extent that we're used to, I don't know. You've seen some casinos in Arizona already start to open up with special, uh, you can't do uh, slot machines right next to, to each other and right. spread out the tables and all. So I think we just need to trust the industry. you got some of the best minds working on this. They're working with the regulators. Right. They're working with Steve, who's working with health care officials. I think they're going to be smart about it because they know that the future hangs on getting people to come back to Las Vegas. We're resilient. We've done it before. And one of the things I got in the bill was some funding to we're back in business advertising like they did along the Gulf when they had that big oil spill come back, the Gulf is back, maybe we can use some of that economic development money to say come back to Las Vegas. 
but people have to be sure that they're going to be safe or they won't want to come back. And there was a, a commercial release recently that, that looked pretty good. I have a question about the, the Western States Pact. So California, Colorado, Washington, um, Oregon, and Nevada get involved in this pact. The, within a couple of weeks, the, the request for, for $1 trillion from the federal government takes place. What exactly is this pact supposed to do, and, and should we expect Nevada to open up at the same timeline as California, or how are, how, are we, how are we connected according to this pact? Well, I think it's very smart that we're working with uh, the other states in the region, and the governor has been working with Governor Inslee in Washington and Newsom in California because, you know, this boundary, this uh, virus doesn't know a boundary. It could easily travel from Los Angeles up here when somebody comes for the weekend. So I think what they're trying to do is maybe coordinate some of the tracing of where the virus is or how, who's opening up when, uh, use of money for regional projects. Uh, so I think it's a good idea that we're part of that coalition. Congresswoman, I wanted to ask you one more question in regards to Joe Biden. Obviously, I know you, you support uh, the vice president. Uh, latest polls that have come out are showing him leading, at least in most of the polls throughout the country, uh, when it comes to him, of course, versus the president right now, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, uh, listen, I thought Hillary was going to uh, defeat uh, Trump in 2016. I was wrong. A lot of people were wrong on that. How much do you think we should look at these polls and be confident on it? Because a lot of people are confident that Hillary was going to defeat Trump. And, and what do you make of these latest polls and how much uh, should we uh, look into that and look at it as fact? Well, you know, everybody says the poll is just a snapshot in time and the poll that counts is the one that's taken on election day. It's encouraging to see those figures because I think it reflects that people around the country are seeing this president is just having no leadership at the federal level in this virus. Every day he goes on TV and says something just outrageous, like now he's taking the malaria drug. Half the people right. don't believe him and think that's bad. Half the people don't believe it, think it's a lie. Either way, it's not a good thing. So I think people are seeing Joe Biden as a, a leader. Um, he's going to work very hard for every vote, though. We're working hard in Nevada. There are a lot of phone banks going on. A lot of telemeetings. I've been on some and, and with women in New York. With uh, He's doing uh, a lot more social media. It's just changed the whole way you do campaigns. Sure. But, you you know, you don't go out there and kiss babies and shake hands right. in a situation like this. I think people respect the way he's doing it. Oh, I do too, Dina. And, and I'll tell you what, we certainly respect you and the way you're doing things uh, for us here in Nevada. No, you do a fantastic job, and, and I really mean that. I've always thought that about you, and we always appreciate when you take some time to join us. Congresswoman Dita Titus, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Let's stay in touch. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. Hours, always does a fantastic job. I really do appreciate her, Congresswoman Dina Titus. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, some new evidence and information in the Ahmad Arbery case, and it involves the police in that area. Take a break. Be back right after this. It's the Vegas Take. Disconnect it? Doesn't look like it. No, I think it's still on. Or I can hear you. Well, I.
something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Sean Hannity, weekdays noon to 3 p.m. Now back to the Vegas Take on 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K-Dawn. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, glad you could join us on a Tuesday live from Brian Shapiro's kitchen table. Coming up here in hour number three, Vice President of Corporate Communications for Boyd Gaming, David Stroh, will join us. When are they going to be opening up their casinos? And then the owner of a strip club called The Ten. I love this story. In Cheyenne, Wyoming, he's opened up his strip club. Uh, is he afraid that customers, people are, you know, that's a very intimate place. I think, how do you social distance with a stripper? I don't understand how that works. How can you get a lap dance? Are they going to divide you? I, I don't understand how that works. Anyway, we'll be talking to him coming up in hour number three. But a uh, very serious story and a story that we've been covering for a few weeks. Uh, and it, it's horrible. Of course, it's the Maude Aubrey story. Innocent 25-year-old African-American that was gunned down like an animal uh, by these two uh, white guys who I like to call them McClans. They're called the McMichaels, but uh, they're going to be in jail for a long time. I don't think there's any question about that, but there's a lot of new information that we're learning. Uh, we're learning that this kid was not chased down for 10 or 20 seconds. He was chased down for four minutes before he was murdered. Four minutes. Minutes. Of course this kid was scared. Who the hell are these people following me? That's a long chase, okay? Most police chases don't last four minutes. He was chased for four minutes. So that's well, one... That, that's a hunt, Brian. That's a hunt. That's yeah, not a chase. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. It's absolutely a hunt. It is. Uh, I mean, we both have been pretty consistent with our opinions on this case from day one. Um, so, you know, uh, one of the suspects, apparently the father, helped release this video of the incident because this dope actually thought that it would help his case. The only reason why we're talking about this case right now is because of the video. Make no mistake about it. If there was no video in this case, this would not be a national story. And I guarantee you, with the, with the people that the McMichaels knew, there would have been no arrest. Yeah, I truly believe they that. They would have gotten away with it. I, I, totally I truly believe well. that. So now there's new uh, surveillance video showing multiple people had trespassed at this home that Ahmad Aubrey visited. Uh, but yet he was the only one killed here. There were multiple people that were there. Now, why they were there? Some say, well, there was, there was a water faucet in the back. I don't know. All I know is that when I was a kid, maybe not in my mid-20s, but when I was in high school and I was messing around with my friends, we went to uh, houses that were under construction just walking around, just goofing around. It's not a felony. Okay? It's not a felony. And now we have a new video that came out. Now, this is an interesting video. It's interesting on a few fronts. It's a video of Aubrey uh, getting into it with police officers. What it is is it's back in 2017. Uh, Aubrey is parking his car in a park. He's doing nothing wrong. So there's two issues in this video but, uh, that I have. One that helps Aubrey and one that maybe hurts him. I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. It doesn't justify what took place in the murder a few months ago. That's not what I'm saying. But just a, a look inside his mind and then the police officers. 
so I want to play this audio, but I want to set it up again. This was back in 2017. It's poli- police body cam footage with audio. Uh, Aubrey parks his car in the park. Keep in mind, he was never arrested. He wasn't doing anything wrong. And I want you to listen to this with your own ears, and then we'll discuss it. Here it is. Turn around, put your hands on the car. Wow. Turn around, put your hands on the car. Up, Turn around, put your hands on the car. I'm checking you, you for weapons. Read. I'm checking you, you for check, weapons. Check. You got a reason to check me, bro. I'm not searching you. I'm checking you for weapons. All right, man? You don't have any warrants? I know, but you're coming up on me. You make me kind of nervous. Me bro. Okay? You bother me for nothing. You can't go in my car. You're not allowing me to search your car? You I'm not asking don't you. It, Just don't reach Hands out your pocket. Hands out your pocket. Down. Warning, down. Stay on the ground. Just stay on the ground, okay? Keep your hands out. No, keep your hands out. I've checked for weapons. I've checked for weapons. Okay, so a couple things here. That sound that you heard was the police attempting to tase him, but here's the problem with that. First of all, let me be honest about this whole situation. Nobody handled this situation right. Aubrey didn't handle it right. The police didn't handle it right. Let me start with the police because I think that's more important. He was doing nothing wrong. He parked his car in the park, and they come up to him and assume that he's a drug dealer or he's doing drugs because there were drugs in that area. That is an unlawful detain. That is completely unlawful. They had no reason to suspect that he was doing anything wrong because he wasn't. The police were wrong. Second, the second police officer who attempted to tase Aubrey and was unsuccessful, that wasn't warranted. Why? Because the other officer already checked him for weapons. He didn't have any weapons on him. He wasn't uh, a threat. So this is another example of the police racially profiling. The kid was doing nothing wrong. Now, with that being said, I will hold a little bit of criticism towards Aubrey. Here's where I think he made a mistake. Now, I understand he's frustrated. He's doing nothing wrong. The police get up on him. They're asking him all these questions. I would be frustrated, too. But here's what I wouldn't do. And listen, I'm not a black man. I understand that, okay? Police, some police are going to treat me differently than if I looked like Ahmaud Arbery. I understand that. With that being said, it doesn't do any good to be aggressive towards the police officers. And what you didn't hear in that video, and I watched the entire video, is Aubrey lunging at one of the officers being aggressive. You can't do that. Don't swear at the officer because that's going to piss off the officer. Whether the officer is right or wrong, I think we all can agree. When you're aggressive towards a police officer and you're swearing at a police officer, it's probably not going to help your situation any. It's not going to make your situation any better. You shouldn't have had to show your ID. Show your ID, though. Officer, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just here at the park. You can search my car. I got nothing on me. And then he would have been about his way. It wouldn't have escalated to that point. While I sympathize with Aubrey and why he was so frustrated, I get it. I can only imagine this wasn't the first time this happened to him. I get it. And I know it happens to many African Americans across the country. It's wrong. It needs to stop. And that's why I say these body cameras and the audio need to be on 24-7. So if an African American is treated unfairly, he can file a report and then an attorney can get that body camera footage to see if the officer did not behave properly. Those officers did not behave properly. They were wrong. But it also gets in the mind of this young man, and in no way, shape, or form am I justifying the officer's behavior there, and in no way, shape, or form am I justifying the McMichaels or the McClans, as I like to call them, for the murder of this young man. I am not justifying any of that. But with that being said, it does get into a little bit of the mind of this young man. I would imagine this is probably not the first time police have, uh, have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, I guess have harassed him. But at the same time... You could call it racial profiling and harassment. You could definitely call that. I mean, initially... Especially initially. Now, obviously, when when he launched it, but you're right that the the tase the tase didn't make a lot of sense if he already searched him and he didn't say that he, he said I'm checking you for weapons and Ahmad Arbery said you can't search me and he says well this, right. this, I'm I'm, a, I'm that actually, is a search I'm not so, well yeah exactly that, that that that's exactly what he was doing the entire time yep. but I think what this proves is that the PD of Brunswick knew who this guy was and it kind of corroborates a text message that. The elderly McMichael, Gregory McMichael, claimed that he was told by a police officer via text that he could make a citizen's arrest. Which is ridiculous. And it is ridiculous, but this this particular situation corroborates that story. So I think there might be something to that. Yeah. Well, again, and it's so hard for me to do this because I am totally on the side of the Arbery family. This was a murder. This was a lynching. With that being said, I hate to say this, but it doesn't do any good for a citizen even if you believe the officer is wrong, to swear at an officer and to be aggressive at an officer, in most cases, that's just going to get the officer angry. Listen, we're all human, right? These officers are going to get more agitated and more upset. And listen, it's the officer's responsibility to maintain, keep his emotions in check and serve and protect. 
But I can tell you right there, in that specific in- situation, even though the officers were dead wrong, and they were, it doesn't do you any good to be aggressive and lunge at an officer and swear. And that's what Arbery did. It's just not smart. But if, if I'm Ahmaud Arbery and I'm sitting there in my car, I'm thinking to myself, if I'm, if I'm white, is this happening to me? And I'm thinking the answer is no. Probably not. I, I don't think that if, if, that was, if that was a truck and there was two kids in it that were hanging out in that particular place, in that particular park, even if there were drugs in the area and they were Caucasian, I don't think they would have been stopped. In well, fact, they may have been waved to. They may have known those police officers considering how small that town was. Well, and so, so from, from, that, from that thought process, I, I understand where Ahmaud Arbery was coming from by, by getting angry with the police officers because to him he's thinking to himself, yeah, but- I didn't do anything wrong. Now, the fact that he wouldn't let them search his vehicle – that there's there's something to that, that as well. It's not just that. I saw the video. I, I understand frustration, but I saw the video. And uh, Aubrey kind of lunges at the officer in a very aggressive way. Can't do that under any circumstance. Can't do that because then that gives the officer an opportunity. Uh, I hate to use the term opportunity, but to take out a weapon. Sure. It, takes, it, it gives the officer an opportunity to either tase him or take out a gun. You cannot lunge at an officer under any circumstances. Period. But that being said, these officers are wrong. It is important for people, not just minorities, it's important for everyone in this country to understand the law. And the law states you do not have to show an officer your ID unless you're detained or suspicion of committing a crime. Before you show an officer your IDs, you need to ask him that question. What's your suspicion that I've committed a crime? What crime do you think I've committed? Uh, Am I detained? And if they don't give you an answer and you're not being detained, you do not have to show your ID. I would not show my ID to those officers uh, because they were wrong. They were flat out wrong in the way they handled that situation. I guarantee you those types of situations happen in this country hundreds of times a day. There's no doubt. That could have ended very badly. If that was a younger officer or maybe an officer that was new to the job or, God forbid, an officer that was racist in one way, shape, or form, he could have been shot dead there. And it is a, there is a chance that officers could have been justified. Why? Because Aubrey lunged at one of the officers. And that officer could say, I felt like my life was in danger. Don't give an officer an out. Don't give him a reason to take out his gun. Do what he tells you to do. And I talk to a lot of African Americans about this. And I say, listen, I don't know what it's like to be black. I don't know what it's like to have to be harassed by police officers all the time. I don't. And I'm not going to pretend to. you also don't know if this was the first time this had happened to him. Like I said, I, I would imagine this has happened before. But what I do know is this. It's not going to do you any good to argue with a police officer, to swear at a police officer, to act aggressive towards a police officer. I'm sorry, guys. It's just stupid. You can't do that. The, don't give an officer an out to do something that you're not going to like. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Again, that number is 702 702- Two five seven five three nine six. If you want to be a part of the conversation, let's start off with Malik. Malik, you're first up on the Vegas take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Malik? Oh yeah, guys. Hey man, listen, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Uh, you know what's interesting, man? It's like if you were a white guy, you could be outrageous as you want because those guys will look at you as your brother. Oh, this is my little brother. You know. And the thing is, with Aubrey, he was. Like 22 then. He was young. Yeah, right. 22. You got, these, you got these police officers coming up to him. One, uh, he's by himself. So the guy, first of all, he was one-on-one with this one guy. All the cop had to do, he didn't even have to stop him. The guy was out in the park entertaining himself. But, right. But, he did, but the thing is, like you said, emotions come in. You're right. But if it's like the same situation that it was a white dude, those cats wouldn't have even... I don't, like, uh, I don't disagree with you. I... I th- yeah, I, Malik. I think I think Malik. Most likely, you're probably right. And by the way, this area has had issues, just like Ferguson had issues with uh, African American citizens and and police and law enforcement. So you're probably right on that. But again, Malik, I have to be honest with you. My opinion doesn't change on what took place a few months ago. It was a lynching. It was a murder. But with that being said, we have to teach young African Americans that even if you think the police officer is wrong, compliance. Please comply with what they. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get out of there scot free without getting hurt or killed. But what I'm trying to, I want, I don't because want. There's still a chance that that, right. that that officer is racist. Of course. But what I'm saying is you have a better opportunity, a much better opportunity of being unscathed. I guess that's the word I would use if you just comply. You know? Sometimes you're so pissed off. You know, like, it's like, you're like, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm an old man now, but I'm saying as a kid, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, you know, so it was a different kind of confrontation because most of those cops are on feet. 
and they didn't mess with me that much because in a, in a, in a project, you know, you can get, you can get shot. Right. Yeah. Right. But but when you were in a country situation like where, where Aubrey was, those cops were punks. And I will say this: the majority of officers, that do, I got a couple of cousins that one's a, a marshal, another one's a highway patrol officer. Right. And most of them I know are good, but you got a lot of punks out there, and those and those officers that stopped them in their park. Yep. I agree. I think both of those officers, but here's what's so dangerous about this, Malik, you know, and I agree with you, by the way, and by the way, always good to hear from you, and I, I appreciate the phone call. Yeah, good call, Malik. Let me, let me just say this, though. Here's what's unfortunate about this situation. One of those officers could have taken out his gun, and one of those officers could have shot Ahmaud Arbery, and I personally believe he could have possibly been justified for that. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Aggressive resisting arrest. I, I agree with that. I hear what you're saying. The only part of that video that I disagree with you on is this. I watch the video. The audio doesn't always do justice. And in a part of that video, you see Aubrey getting aggressive and lunging towards the officer. You can't do that. You just can't. And Brian, what this really shows, and you mentioned it at the beginning of this conversation, it shows maybe the mindset of that community. This is the same department that the elder McMichael was a police officer with. Right, right. Okay, so it, it, it shows maybe what, it, what it's like to be a young black man in Brunswick, Georgia. Well, and That's I, the point. I think that there's a chance that he was disliked by the police department. Well, being disliked. That, that, that Ahmaud Arbery was, yeah. was known by a lot of police officers in Brunswick, and they had their eye on him, and he was disliked. Well, and in McMichael, and then, otherwise, why would they have? Why would they have created that story? There's a lot of people. Mother, that, that it was. It was a home invasion. I'm why, sure there's a lot. Why would they have done that? Why right. would they have? And then corroborate that up, up the chain in of that course. particular. Scene. But I'm sure you would agree. Just because you dislike someone doesn't give you the reason to chase of after them. Of, of course, I'm not yeah. saying that. that I mean, you know, there's, I'm, I, but what I'm saying is there's that a I, history. I think the police are a little more involved. Than, well, than we were initially led to believe, you, at least on behalf of what Greg Greg McMichael well, and, 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 and his son Travis did. I, but, I think I think there is a lot of blame to go around here. It, it, it doesn't just lie with, with the McClan, so to of speak. Of course there's a lot of blame. I want to know the officers that lied to the mother. I want to know the officer that told the McClans uh, that they could act as citizens and make a citizen's arrest. I want to know... Who told them specifically not to make those arrests the night of the murder? So, yes, you're right. It does go around. Let's go back to the phone lines, 702-257-5396. Let's go to Mark. Mark, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Mark? Pretty good, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Doing okay. Um, Brian, I actually agree with you on this. Aubrey uh, was killing. It was murder. Hopefully there is a death penalty in Georgia. Yeah. But with that being said... I called, like, I've been on hold for like 20 minutes, and I'm actually calling on a Dina Titus interview. Is that all right? All right, quickly, go ahead. Since you've been waiting on hold, go for it. Real quick. One, she said that this is not political, and that is not the case at all. This is 100% political. Well, it shouldn't be political. I think that's, yeah, it shouldn't be. Do you agree with that? Uh, I think that both sides are making it political. My my thing is I don't think it should be political. But, Brian, they're not because one side... Is, is willing to reopen the economy and the other side is not. Uh, there are different reasons for that. I don't believe those. Uh, I don't believe the main reason why. And by the way, that's not true. There are people on the right that think that we should I mean, do no, this responsibly. I mean, there, there are there are some, but the majority of, of the states that are open right now are Republican states. Uh, there are people on the right that want to go and use Donald Trump's own guidelines. And by the way, we are in phase one right now. Uh, there are plenty of states that are in phase one. I appreciate the call. My point Good is call. my point is very simple. It is political on both sides of the aisle. I'm not going to sit here and say and, and let someone say, well, it's just Democrats that are making it political. It's both sides of the aisle, and it shouldn't be political in a perfect world. 702-257-5396. Let's go to Kevin. Kevin, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Kevin? Hey, guys. Yeah, I was just uh, noticing you guys kind of just drifting back and forth with the RB case as far as, you know, I understand the stop a little bit, but uh, stops were wrong guys are dithering whether they, sh- they could have shot him and they but overall it was it was uh something that the uh 
a black man has to deal with every day. And to think that uh, this was his first time, of course not. But he's not the villain here. No, I'm not saying he is, Kevin. I'm not saying he is the villain. By the way, I'm not defending. We're saying the Kevin, exact opposite. I'm not saying, I'm not defending these cops. They were wrong. But here's what I am saying. If you lunge toward an officer and you're aggressive towards an officer, you're giving an officer an out to take out his gun and do something very bad. I don't want that to happen, yeah, Kevin. And, and, okay, and then this is the thing there. That right there, you're giving, we're giving them the out. You, the public empowers these officers to do this because you guys keep standing behind them. Okay, first of all, and, they hold say, on. and I would say that you, know, it, you guys in this situation, considering we're in Las Vegas, that wouldn't apply, but the public is definitely empowering them in Brunswick, Georgia. I'll okay. agree with that. Kevin, let me respond to what you just said, because I couldn't disagree with you more. I've called this a lynching since day one. I said those two white men who killed this man at, at, like an animal deserve to be in jail the rest of their lives. I also want every single police officer held responsible that kept this under the rug. All I am simply saying, Kevin, is this. It, you cannot lunge towards an officer, regardless of whether the officers are right or wrong. And yes, there's, hold on a second, there's... Officers, but officers also know that in a shooting, in a shooting, one officer fires, all of them fire. You know why they do that, right? Because but, they're stronger as a, as, as a unit if they all shoot. And but that's not true, and a lot of these officers, that's not true, though, and a lot of these officer-involved shootings, it's usually just one officer, so I don't know where you're getting your facts from. I'm not defending these officers, Kevin. Any video that you look at, it's like 20 shots fired. What, are you, what, what officer-involved shooting in Las Vegas have you heard of where there were several different officers that shot? You'll get one or two, you'll get one, trust me, you'll get one from Vegas. Well, you're not, we're not talking about one, you're saying, well, sir. We're also not talking about Vegas. Okay. All right. But you know, Kevin, Kevin, I I do agree with you. Kevin, I do I do agree with you that the the police department in Brunswick, Georgia, is empowered by the public. Well, that but that but that's but that's the situation that that does, we're we're, to, we're talking about Brunswick, Georgia. That that's where this happened. And clearly, the fact that they created that story, that that home invasion story, they they feel comfortable enough with the public to be able to do that and not have a lot of backlash because there is there is clearly systemic racism in Brunswick, Georgia. You know, clearly. You know, here's what I don't like about this phone call. Okay, I understand his frustration. I am on his side when it comes to this Arbery case. Those two men, I give them the electric chair for all I care. They're murderers. But one thing I didn't hear in that phone call is you need to comply with police officers. For whatever reason, some people have the attitude that if police officers are effing with you or they pull you over for no reason, that gives you the right to mouth off, maybe get into a physical confrontation with them. And I'm sorry, folks. That's wrong. While there are some police officers out there that are racist, and there are some cops out there that should not be on the streets, that doesn't give you a right to swear, yell, and lunge at a police officer. And if a police officer says he feels like his life is in danger, and if somebody is lunging towards me and swearing at me, I'll probably take my gun out, but then again, I wouldn't uh, you know, pull somebody over for no reason, and I wouldn't look at somebody because of the color of their skin and search their vehicle. So there's two sides to that. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, when is Boyd Gaming opening up? When are their casinos opening up? Well, the Vice President of Corporate Communication joins us next. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. Here at Rocket Mortgage, we don't know. rock family of companies. What's Every that? one of our don't team know. members. Well, he doesn't know. My uncle Paul, what's going on? I was at the grocery store to make sure that people can put food on the table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My, my wife's cousin Marie can work yeah. so hard yeah. on the nurse yeah. saving others. Thank you for being a hero in our community, Dance Marie. To those who so leave your homes to keep on, us safe in ours, we thank you. From the front lines to behind the scenes, we see you. You're essential every day, and today, you're heroes. You're giving the families everywhere a little more on the two, on the two line to line. We're sending all our love, gratitude, and hope your way. Here's to all of you. We couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Hey, we Do I have anything else I need to play here? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to think of America's front line and the social workers for it, visit everyoneknowsahero.com. For the most of the year, we're at 4030. License is not safe. Keep legal entity that identifies itself as part of the Rock family of companies and a separate legal entity with their own governance and management structure. Your home for Sean Hannity, KDWN Las Vegas, KLZ HD2 Las Vegas, a Beasley Media Group State. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin give their first report on the economic stimulus programs. 
correspondent uh, Linda Ken, Yama the has the latest. Like before it in the midst of the coronavirus and social and distancing in mind, like, it was a virtual me, hearing, like, but the stinging rebukes were quite were, real, the like in this exchange so. between you Senator you know Elizabeth and, Warren and, 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 and Senator Mnuchin. You're in charge of half the trillion dollars. You're boosting your Wall Street funds, and you are leaving the court behind. Senator Warren, I think that's a very unfair characterization. The $2.2 trillion CARES Act includes money for the Paycheck Protection Program. The House passed another stimulus package last week. Linda Kent, Washington. Maryland's first pediatric death from the coronavirus in Baltimore County. 15-year-old resident died after being infected by COVID-19. I'm Mike Moss. Despite new cases and deaths among workers in the meatpacking industry, President Trump tells a group of farmers things are better than ever. They had a disproportionately high number of people that had the problem, and that's going away. The plants are very, very clean now. They're getting to a level where I think we had some reports that they're cleaner than they've ever been. Uh, well, that's, that's a good report. I don't know exactly that's stupid or wrong, but that doesn't mean that you should launch any office. Trump has made enough GOP no, no, congressional no, no, leaders to consider the next steps the in the government response to the economic and health concerns caused by the coronavirus. The Federal Aviation Administration says it will require Boeing and other aircraft makers to adopt new safety management tools. Well, what's your alternative? Well, then you're going to get killed. Then you're going to get killed. If you're okay with that. Dying, on Wall Street, then, okay. the S and P up four <laughs> points, but the Dow uh, is down. The officer has all the power. That's the I'm problem. Mike Moss. The yeah. officer, whether you like it or not, the it's officer has all the power. He's got the gun. He's got road. the authority. Yeah. And, you know, I would, me personally, I would rather this be harassed. This report sponsored by the USGA 360 Strategy. No delays to report I-15 north and southbound. It doesn't make it right. And the spaghetti bowl looking good on the 95 east side, west side inbound as well. Up to the I-15 interchange on the surface streets. Crash reported Decatur south of right. Flamingo. There's causing delays. Take a, an alternate like I mean, Argyle or did, Jones did instead to avoid heavy smoke. Heroin, meth, and opioids grip our arrested. community. It's time to wake up Vegas and that, protect uh, those you care about. Visit wakeup-vegas.com for resources to change lives. I'm John Rogers from the K-Don. It's open enrollment season, and MediShare is the Christian healthcare sharing ministry that saves most families about $500 a month. Google MediShare and see if it's a fit for you. MediShare, healthcare you can believe in. Warning, this product yeah. contains nicotine. Cannot, nicotine is an addictive chemical. You have to. Whether you enjoy you classical, live, rock, 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 or heavy metal, well, the we answer is no, and you just want to argue. Or, no, or no, it's then, then you're, then you're, then, That's why then you're Views just, also offers you more ways to vape your way. I mean, so it's available in five bold color so options, so three right. smooth tastes, uh, and three new I'm saying, I'm saying, if you're being mistreated, Views, charge beyond. You know, you sale hire Attention all and authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have yeah, you read the book and want to get it published? Well, Page what Publishing what will get your book into bookstores and, and for sale either, online either at Amazon, Apple or iTunes, or and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-501-3689 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-501-3689. 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDON, the talk of Las Vegas. The opinions of the hosts on KDWN are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. Hello, everyone. This is President Trump, the greatest president in the history of presidents. And the only show I listen to is the top rated show, Sharp and Shapiro. They are the best. Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us on a Tuesday. Coming at you live. You know, we had Congresswoman Dina Titus on uh, last hour, and I asked her, geez, when do you think these casinos will reopen? She doesn't know for sure. Uh, she gave a date of July 4th just because that would be, you know, the biggest next date, you know, to, to open things up. But she doesn't know. 
Uh, I don't think anybody knows for sure right now when these casinos are going to open up. Certainly, some of these casinos have their, their dates set where they're taking reservations, but they don't know either because this happened back in April. And, you know, uh, some great local casinos here in Las Vegas. In fact, I prefer the local quote-unquote casinos over some of those bigger casinos on the Strip. And Boyd Gaming does a great job. I, I certainly uh, have made some donations to some of their casinos on the casino floor. There's no question about that, but I enjoy their casinos. And the Vice President of Corporate Communications for Boyd Gaming is joining us right now on the line. He is David Stroh. David, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well, and I appreciate your, uh, your donation. <laughs> you know what? You guys comp really well. I will say that. You go into one of your Boyd properties, and you, and you dump some money. It could be a few hundred dollars, whatever it is. I've never, no one's ever said no to me to get a comp, whether it's a restaurant or a buffet. People there are always very nice. Uh, so I want to certainly commend you guys for that. All right, let me start with the billion-dollar question, so to speak. And I don't know if you'll have an answer for me on this Literally, not, literally the billion-dollar question. Let's, let's literally. go with this. Do you have any sense at all, David, of when your casinos will be allowed to reopen. Well, I think you said it best, which is nobody really knows, and certainly we don't have any particular insight to that uh, either. I mean, certainly we are very eager to get back to business. Um, we will be ready to go when we get the green light from the state of Nevada. But at the moment, unfortunately, I don't really have any great insight that I could offer that anyone else does. Is it, is it the Gaming Commission that would give you the authority to do that, or is it the governor? No, no. We, we were waiting for uh, the Gaming Control Board will ultimately give us the direction on when we can proceed. Right, and, and, and I was under the impression there's, there's been several conversations that the governor has given the, the when, the timeline, to the Gaming Control Board to make that, to make that decision. Is, is that true? Uh, again, that, that would be something you would have to ask the Gaming Control Board. Certainly, we are not aware of a particular timeline just yet. Sure. Uh, as I noted yep. earlier, you know, we want to get open. You know, obviously, our our uh, our employees want to get back to work. Our customers want to come back. And when we get that green light, we will be ready to go. But at the moment, like everyone else in our business, we are definitely in a pattern. Have they told you at all how much time they're going to give you? To reopen, like for example, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we anticipate we'll get some advance notice. You know, uh, I couldn't tell you precisely how much that will be, but there will be some advance notice before we go. I don't think this will be a case where we find out one day and and folks are opening their doors 24 hours later. I think that's the expectation is there will be some. Sure. Fair enough. And one of the main reasons why we wanted to have you come on, David, is because you guys have this reopening plan for Vegas. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about that, this Boyd Clean reopening plan. Can you explain to us what exactly this is uh, And you know, in, in anticipation of reopening uh, seven properties, uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in Louisiana and Mississippi, and how this will also apply to Las Vegas? And I think it's a reflection of where we are today uh, with everything that's happened over the last several months. When we get the doors back open, the single most important thing that we can do as a company is make sure that we are doing everything we can to keep our customers safe and to keep our employees safe when they come in the door. That's, and, and really, that's what they're going to be looking for us to do uh, for a lot of folks to be comfortable coming back. And so we get that, and so that's why we've been working for the last month or so on this um, this detailed protocol that we'll call Boy Clean. And so there are a lot of different elements to this. There's uh, enhanced cleaning, so you'll have folks wiping down the slot machines on a regular basis. You'll have people wiping down table games, chairs, elevator buttons, door handles, any place where there's there's the uh, likelihood for touching uh, on a frequent basis. We're going to be cleaning that. When you come in the door, you will be encouraged, highly encouraged, to wear a mask in our casinos. And if you don't have one, we will provide you with one. That is a uh, proven, uh, recommended method for uh, preventing the spread of COVID-19. And we're going to encourage our, our guests to wear those masks. And we will make sure that every one of our employees is wearing a mask. Is that going to have to happen? You say you recommend it. Is, yeah. Is that, is that, will you have to wear a mask to gamble? It's required for, for team members. That will be mandated. Every team member right. will be required to wear a face mask. When it comes to the customers, we will highly encourage it. It will not be mandated, but it will be highly encouraged. And we hope that a, a lot of customers 
uh, will appreciate the importance of wearing these. And as I noted, if, if you need one, we will give you one. We'll be happy to give you one. But it is something that I think that everyone can do in the community to help us prevent the spread of this virus. And to, to tail on to that, the, uh, just the, the sanitation element of this, are you going to have in, in hotel rooms, are you going to have like sanitation packets or like a, a, when, so, when someone checks in to, to, to get a hotel room, are they going to get some type of sanitation, uh, I don't know, like, like, a, like a gift bag almost when, when, they, when they check in? Well, we will certainly provide PPE, so that, you know, in, certain, in terms of a face mask, as I noted, if you need a face mask, we'll provide one to you. And we will have hand sanitizer throughout our property. So as you walk through a property of ours, once it's open, you will have no problem finding a hand sanitizer station. Fair enough. To make those yep. very easy to find. Sure. Um, and when our, uh, when our um, housekeepers go through those rooms, they are going through it with a fine-tooth comb. So they are sanitizing everything that uh, might be a high-touch surface that needs to be clean. So that could include things like a television remote, a telephone, a thermostat, anything like that that's been touched. Our housekeepers are going to thoroughly sanitize that to make sure that our guests are are safe when they uh, are in our hotel. So I I, I was reading up on on a casino just outside of San Diego that opened up yesterday. And their guidelines are no more than three people to a gaming table. They're turning off every other casino slot machine. Uh, craps table, you're not going to have any more than several people. Uh, I believe they're going to have dividers on the tables and, and, you're, and people wearing masks, as, as you mentioned. Is that uh, kind of similar to what you guys plan on doing? Can you give us the future? For example, if you were able to open up next week, what would those gaming tables and slot machines look like, and what do you have in place for that? No, Ed, that is absolutely coming to Las Vegas, and I think that folks should expect that will happen, not only at a Boyd property, because we certainly will be enforcing that, but everywhere in the industry. So there will be uh, limits on the number of slot machines that we run. So we will be uh, either turning off machines or removing chairs so that two people cannot sit next to each other when they are playing slot machines. So there will be social distancing on the slot boards. When it comes to table games, Depending on the game you're playing, there will be a maximum of three or four players who can be at that. If you're at a craps table, you're only talking about three to a side. So social distancing is obviously very important, and that's going to make the uh, casino experience different than than what we're accustomed to. We don't need we don't want people to be crowded on top of each other. It is going to be different. What about um, poker? Because uh, I, I, I hope that folks. Hmm? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say, what about uh, like a poker table? Would you guys even run poker room, uh, the poker room in your places? Yeah, we're taking a look at that as well. It will, but it, again, would be more limited seating than you typically see. You're not going to see 10-player games anymore, that, or at least not for the time being, because you can't enforce proper social distancing with that many players at the table. Now, you know, again, we understand it's going to be different, but we hope that folks understand why. It is, it's, it's what is necessary to ensure the health and safety of everybody at the property. Um, and so it's just what we're going to have to do for the time being, but it is important, and that's why we will be doing it. So gaming to Nevada is more important than any other state in the United States. It, it, it basically accounts for about 40% of sales tax revenue. Right now you have 82 casinos open across seven states, and, and this week you're opening up Louisiana, Mississippi. South Dakota has casinos open. Washington has casinos open, as does Arizona, and, and soon to be, I, I believe, San Diego opened yesterday. Why do you think that Nevada, despite the fact that the economy needs it more than any other state in the country, has waited this long to open casinos? I couldn't begin to speculate. Um, I think that from our perspective, we understand the importance of why we had to shut down. I mean, we get that. That that was something that had to occur. Um, It was obviously painful for our company. It was was for pretty much every person and every business in the state. But we understand it. it helped bring uh, COVID-19 under control. It helped flatten the curve. And so we get that. Um, look, in terms of reopening, the state will reopen when they deem it uh, when they deem it time to do so. All we can do is provide them with our plans to reopen safely. We will certainly do that. Um, and we'll be ready to go when those doors are open. But we do think this is something that is now moving forward. We anticipate yep. we're going to see um, our other states including Nevada, reopening over the next few weeks. So that is something that, that you know, we're optimistic that will happen and that we can get to business 
To, to answer JD's point, and again, this is just my opinion, I, I believe that the Las Vegas Strip is very unique in itself, and most of these other casinos won't have hundreds of thousands of people flocking to their casinos. I think Las Vegas is very unique in a sense that at times you have hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, in small quarters. And I think that's what makes the Las Vegas Strip very different than a lot of your other casinos throughout the country. Would you agree with that? No, I would agree with that. And, and I think, look, as a company, we're positioned a lot differently than Right. As you noted, we operate local places exactly. in Las Vegas. So these are much, these are smaller footprints, they're different amenities, and we rely on a different kind of customer. We're relying on a local customer, people who live here and come to our properties um, from home. They just drive from home and they go back home. We're not reliant or as reliant on out of town tourism. We do some of it, I mean, especially at a property like the Orleans. Right. But our primary customer base, both here in Las Vegas and around the country, is predominantly a local customer. And we're pretty confident that that's going to be the kind of business that starts to recover first. And so as we approach reopening, you know, we're cautiously optimistic. I mean, obviously, this has been a heck of a time for our country, but we think we are well positioned uh, to start recovering um, pretty quickly. All right, David, two questions for you. One, do you know what that split is between uh, tourism business and local business as far as your re the revenue streams? And, and the second one, have any... Like the Orleans is obviously going to be much more uh, tourism driven because of its proximity to the strip than a property like the Sun Coast would be. Um, but I can tell you that uh, across Las Vegas, the majority of our revenue is coming from a local customer. And do you have any Boyd properties that are going to have to be permanently closed because of this pandemic? We have not uh, announced any. Uh, plans to permanently close any properties. Of this. He is David Stroh, the Vice President of Corporate Communications for Boyd Gaming. Uh, David, I guess I have sort of a gaming question for you. As you know, a lot of locals, they love their free play at your casinos and, and uh, you know, free comps, restaurants. So a lot of people have asked me, a number of people have said, geez, I wonder how they're going to handle these comps. You know, for the month of April and May, I was getting 50 bucks a week in slot free play. So how have you guys discussed that at all? And is it going to be, how's that going to happen? Like when you guys do reopen, is that person going to get all that slot play and that free play? How, how's that going to work? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, 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 uh, we got that message. I mean, obviously, if you can't send them into the casinos, you can't redeem these offers that you were getting, and you can't uh, earn these offers. And so we're going to make adjustments to the Be Connected program. So when folks come in, A, they're going to stay on track to stay at their current tier level. They're not going to Good. lose ground. If they have an Emerald card or an Onyx card, they're going to stay on track for that. They're not going to be penalized for the last couple of months. And any offers that they had in their account, whether it be if it's a comp, we will reissue it. If it expires, we'll reissue a similar comp to them. If they had points that were going to expire, they aren't going to expire while they're closed. So Good. we want to make sure that folks keep whole while we're closed and and are ready to come back when we're open. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I guess this would be my last question for you, David. I mean, is there any anything that you want to convey to the people here in Las Vegas, those, uh, well, really across the country, but particularly here in Las Vegas that frequent your casinos all the time? What is the message that you would like to share with them? Well, what I would share with them is we're very much looking forward to having you back. And But understand that when we welcome you back, we're going to be doing everything we can to keep you safe. That's important to us. We know that a lot of folks are wondering about that. And I would encourage them to take a look at our website, to take a look at the Boyd Clean Program and see what we're doing, because that is very important to us. We are going to do what we can to keep you safe while you're with us. That is important to us, and we're going to be committed to that. Glad to hear that. David, you guys are doing a great job, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on and explain some of these really important uh, issues with us. So thanks so much, David. We appreciate you. And I look forward to playing a little bit of poker at the Orleans sometime soon down the road. I love the Orleans. It's one of my favorite local casinos in Las Vegas. It literally has everything from, you know, the, the great restaurants to the movie theater to the great poker room. So uh, hope you back are up again, back again soon, my friend. And thanks so much for your time. All right. Yeah, thanks go. a lot, David. That is David Stroh, the Vice President of Corporate Communications at Boyd Gaming. A big-time job there, and it seems like he's pretty much juiced into what they're doing. And, yeah, I didn't think that you would lose <laughs> slot play because of the coronavirus. They're certainly not going to uh, punish customers for not being able to be in there. And, of course, they're going to want to – I think it's actually the opposite. I think they're actually going to give people more yeah, I think to, so try to, to try to lure them into I the I think casino. you're going to see a lot more comps across yeah. all of Las yeah. Vegas. Well, guess what, J.D.? There is one casino – 
that is really doing a big favor for the locals. We're going to explain what that casino is and what they've already announced to try to get people back into their casino. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with your car. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. It's the Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, k this is John Green, um, and if your teeth are staining from coffee, this, tea, or smoking, Power Swaps is the answer. Yeah, yeah, in five yeah. minutes, you'll see two I shades wider teeth, you know, and in seven days, six coffee, shades. Even better, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to that's blend in. That's a big deal, right? Just swap your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swaps, call 1-800-679-0969. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-679-0969. That's 1-800-679-0969. You've heard me talk about Homie and how they will save you thousands of dollars when you buy or sell a home. Not only are they disrupting the traditional real estate model, but I am blown away by how they are investing in our local community during these tough times. I couldn't be more proud to endorse Homie, and here's why. Homie is committing up to $100,000 to the United Way of Southern Nevada to help keep people in their homes through rent and mortgage assistance for those impacted by COVID-19. For every home bought or sold with Homie over the next 90 days, they will donate $500 to the United Way. Even more importantly, Homie will rebate their entire $2,500 listing fee back to you if you are forced to sell your home due to this crisis. That's right, no selling fee. That's huge. It's amazing to see a new company in Las Vegas step up in such a big way. Text JD to 88588 to buy or sell with Homie. Again, text JD to 88588. Stay safe and save thousands. Homie really does have our back. I'm attorney Paul Powell. If you get hurt in a crash, did you know your lawyer can take more money than you? That's right. You get hurt and the lawyer gets rich. Not very fair, is it? When you hire me, those worries go bye, bye, bye. I promise never to take more money than you. And I put it in writing. If you're tired of greedy lawyers, call 728-5500 or go to paulpowell.com. I really can help. Paul Powell. More lawyer. Less fee. Some restrictions apply. Parents, stop making excuses for your children and do something to help them for the rest of their lives. Sign up at Infinity the Math Institute for the best math tutoring in the country, the best online math tutoring in the world. We help struggling students excel and help successful students get to the next level. We are also here for parents, offering free seminars explaining what your students are learning, why it seems different from what you learned, and how you can help your child do better. We also offer super affordable SAT prep classes on Fridays before our super popular Friday fun nights where students and parents meet like-minded and driven families in a fun and constructive atmosphere. Coming to Infinity will be the best decision you've ever made for your child. Call 702-768-1777 or visit themathinstitute.com and tell them the Vegas Take sent you for a free assessment. That's 702-768-1777. Because at Infinity, you don't get more math problems, you get solutions. Mark Levin, weekdays 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now back to the Vegas Take on 1015 FM, 720 AM. k Don. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us on a Tuesday. We just had David Stroh, the Vice President of Corporate Communications for Boyd Gaming, uh, just giving us all the information. Look, guys, this is, this is the way of life now for us. We better get used to it. If you're going to walk into a casino soon, in a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, I don't know when they're going to open. But if you are, you better be prepared to wear a mask. You better be prepared to practice social distancing, whether you agree with it or not or think this is a hoax. You ain't getting in a casino if you're not going to practice social distancing, whether you want to go to a restaurant or whether you want to gamble. I love to gamble, but I am going to wear a mask if I'm going to gamble, and I am certainly going to practice social distancing, and I'm going to wash my hands a lot. Uh, casino chips are some of the dirtiest things you could touch. Maybe not the most dirty thing you could touch in Vegas, but certainly one of the most dirtiest things. Uh, so anyway, uh, we appreciate David taking the time to, to come on our show. All right, so... We've been hearing this for a couple years now, right? And I have been so frustrated with the fact that some of these casinos are charging locals to park. Number one, it's a pain in the ass. Number two, it's really expensive. Number three, they have it right downtown. In these casinos downtown, uh, this is the way it works. Yeah, you have to pay to park, but you get stamped when you're in the casino. So if you're going to a restaurant in the casino and you're giving them business or you're gambling, all you have to do is ask uh, you know, one of the floor men or an employee to stamp your parking ticket, and then you don't have to pay to park because that's what it should be all about. 
It is in, ridiculous to me that you can be a local in Las Vegas and go to a casino and lose $5,000, and then as you're on your way out, hey, thanks for coming, but we're going to charge you yeah. $25 to park. It is a slap in the face or a kick in the nuts or whatever the heck you want to call it. It is the worst. So I'm going to commend MGM properties. Now, I think they made a very big mistake by charging in the first place, and I'm not trying to single them out because they're not the only ones. I go to a Vegas Golden Knights game, and i got to charge $30 to park. It sucks, Okay. But MGM Properties has just announced free parking will be made uh, coming back to the Las Vegas Strip. Upon reopening, MGM Resorts will be offering free self-parking at all properties. A spokesperson confirmed it from MGM yesterday. Now, what are those properties? Well, I just want to name them so let people know. Sure. This is pretty cool. Uh, it's a good thing. MGM Grand. Park MGM, Mandalay Bay, New York, New York, Bellagio, Aria, The Mirage, Luxor, Excalibur, all the main MGM properties. Um, a spokesperson said the free parking will be implemented for the foreseeable future. So they're not even necessarily saying it's just a month or two. This could be forever. I'm hopeful. And I think that if they start doing this, maybe some others will catch on. Carson uh, Fulton announced it as well yesterday. It's a good thing. Yeah, uh, I, th I think Caesars will jump on very soon, and hopefully Harris well, does the same. It's smart for actually. Does Harris already do it for free? They might. No, they charge. They don't. Oh, okay. From a business perspective, this is smart because you want to lure people back in, people that are wary or may may not yeah. believe that it's it's very safe. Uh, it's a smart thing to do. And by the way, not just because of the coronavirus. I've always said this. I think it is absolutely absurd that these look. If you want to charge tourists up the yin yang and the resort fees, go for it. Go for it. Because they have a budget. They, they come to, if you come to Las Vegas and you live in, let's say, Colorado, you're expecting to spend X amount of dollars. You're not expecting to make money. People come to Las Vegas to have a good time, and they're, and they're expected to get, to get just destroyed in parking fees and, and you know, expensive dinners and, and obviously everything else that goes along with it. But, yeah, you're right. For, for locals in Las Vegas, we should never be charged, for, especially because we're the ones that are frequenting these casinos when it's 115 degrees. You know, there, there's, a, there's a dead time of the year for Las Vegas casinos, especially for the trip and for the strip and it's coming in the next couple of months and locals are the one that keep the, the economy going during that time basically it's you know we want to take your money uh please come back so we can take your money but we're not going to charge you to park <laughs> that's basically that's basically what they're saying uh, but uh i'm telling you i've had conversations with people about this i i know as you know uh, i have some pretty close friends in this town that are huge gamblers they spend a lot of money i know some casino hosts in this town as well uh that have some huge clients and they tell me stories about how, you know, they've lost five, 10, 20 grand in one night and they couldn't even get a comp to for free parking. I mean, they'll give them a comp to a restaurant or something, but when it comes to parking, they don't do that there. Now you have to uh, get this credit card, this MGM credit card, and it's a pain in the ass. Listen, can we just be honest and logical here? What is it as a casino owner? What do you want? You want locals to frequent your casino. How many locals will walk into a casino and not spend one dollar? Explain that to me. Name me someone who goes to Flockshire casinos and literally won't spend a dollar. I've never heard of anybody like that. You don't even have to gamble to spend money. You could be buying a drink. You could be on a date. You could go to a restaurant. You could be spending money to go to a show. What person just walks around and watches people and doesn't spend any money? I haven't heard of anybody that does that. The bottom line is if you want people to go into your casino, yeah, well, our producer doesn't spend any money anywhere. That's true. He's, he's, the, he's the one person that'll park his car and just walk around and enjoy watching people lose their money. He does it with me all the time, so he takes pleasure in that. He's the kind of guy that will go into the sports book and watch football games all day and not place one $5 bet. I, I'm not trying to kick you off on a tangent here. I just wanted to let you know that there are people that do like to just you're one of them. Yeah, you're one of them. Jason Stein is one of them. At the very first, zero, zero, one percent. Stein's the kind of guy that will place five different five dollar bets, and the only reason why he won't do one bet is because every single time he goes to the counter and spends five dollars, he wants a drink ticket. Stein is that guy. He'll spend twenty five dollars and he'll get five drinks. Just for the drinks, he'll do it. I'm telling you, if the Patriots are playing the Giants, he'll bet $5 on the Patriots and $5 on the Giants so he can't lose. He'll get his money back, and he'll get two free drink tickets. I'm telling you, Stein is that guy. He's frugal and resourceful <laughs> yes. at the same time. Yes. By the way, Very, very efficient. He gets the best bang for his buck. By the way, uh, for the record, I do know some people that actually do that. They actually will make $5 bets uh, just for the free beverage. It is unbelievably cheap, and it is embarrassing, and I do not want to hang out uh, with people yeah, like I've, that. Yeah, I've seen that happen it is just, several times. It is just, I just want to yeah. punch those people. I can't it's play unbelievable. That it's crazy. Look at now. now. Now I'm condoning violence. I sound like Donald Trump. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, strip club owners... 
When are they opening up in Vegas? We go from casinos to strip clubs. Greg Chavez coming up. He's the owner of The Den in Cheyenne, Wyoming. The Den. That's right. It's a strip club. He's opening up. We'll get his thoughts. Coming up next, it's The Vegas Take. It's time to check the roads. Time for recovery from coronavirus shutdowns. We have states that are opening up and the numbers are going down. Uh, but it's a transition to greatness. It's the third quarter, then it's going into the fourth quarter. I think the fourth quarter is going to be really good. But I think that above all, next year you're going to have a tremendous year. The president just wrapping up a lunchtime meeting with GOP senators on Capitol Hill and also defending his decision to take an unproven malaria drug, calling it a personal decision. The FDA earlier warned of possibly fatal side effects. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo calls it a shocking development. Of the 300 or so new coronavirus cases tracked each day in New York, most are among people at home and not working. Pier 1 is asking a bankruptcy court to let it end its retail operations. The retailer blames store closures caused by coronavirus. I'm Jan Johnson. It's time to check the roads. From the Letterman Road Traffic Studio. This report sponsored by the USDEA 360 Strategy. A crash reported on the 95 northbound at the Spaghetti Bowl. Watch for slowing. Also an accident on Main at Bonanza. You can use Las Vegas Boulevard or maybe MLK as a good alternate. Get around that one. And a crash also reported Durango at Tropicana. In that case, Fort Apache might be a good alternate for you. Heroin, meth, and opioids grip our community. It's time to wake up Vegas and protect those you care about. Visit wakeup-vegas.com for resources to change lives. I'm John Michaels from the K-Don Traffic Center. It's time to get Vegas open again, but we all know it's not as easy as just turning on the lights and opening the doors. Your business needs to keep your employees and customers safe in the age of COVID-19, and that's a significant challenge. But the good news is there's help. Hazmat Nation. Hazmat Nation are professionals who know what it takes to make your business safe and compliant with Nevada's reopening guidelines. Hazmat Nation uses EPA-registered disinfectants and follow all CDC guidelines to make sure that nothing is overlooked. Don't risk the health and safety of your employees or customers. Get your facility cleaned properly and display the Hazmat Nation COVID clean seal on your window. Call 800-391-1491 and talk with a consultant that will help you design a plan for any type of Vegas business. That's 800-391-1491. Be Vegas strong and get your business open safely with the pros at Hazmat Nation, 800-391-1491, or visit hazmatnation.com. This is Lorraine Hunt Bono, inviting you to tune in for Breaking Bread with Bono. Join my husband, Dennis Bono, as celebrities share with him their intimate and humorous stories, Saturdays, 5 to 6 p.m., right here on KDON. Hi, it's David Masters. Join me and my brother, Alan, for Advice Line, 10 to midnight, Monday through Friday, right here on 720 KDON and on 101.5 FM. That's Advice Line, America's live radio counseling program. If you've got problems, we've got your answers. Monday through Friday, 10 to midnight. Looking for that perfect new piece of furniture for your home? A new concept furniture is the place to start and end your search. They'll beat any price on the Internet, and they're here locally, so you can feel what you're buying first. Go to a new concept furniture today at 40. 2255 South Grand Canyon to see for yourself the slick, modern, shiny store that mirrors our shiny city. A new concept. Check out their showroom or call them at 702-570-2240. That's 702-570-2240. Mark Levin, weekdays 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now back to the Vegas Take on 1015 FM 720 AM. KDOG. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us on a Tuesday. So we've been talking a lot about the casinos and when they're going to reopen. And listen, everybody has their needs, right? Some people need to gamble. Some people want to go to a nice restaurant. Well, some people want to go to strip clubs. I think that's very fair. You know, I, I've been in Vegas almost 20 years. I, I've gone to strip clubs maybe once a year. You know, I wouldn't say it's something that I, I do frequently, but uh, if I lived in Wyoming, I'd probably go a lot more than once a year because there are not a lot of casinos in Wyoming. Not that, there, you know, Wyoming isn't a nice place to live, but there's, that's not what I'm there's saying. There's not really a lot to do there in not, general. It's not Vegas. Let's put it that way. However, there is one strip club owner. The place is called The Den, uh, and it's located in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and the owner of that 
Strip Club is going to be opening up his place of business, and he is Greg Chavez, and he joins us right now on the line. Greg, thanks for being here. How are you? Hey, what's up, Greg? Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing good, man. All right, so let me ask you this. How do you get a lap dance while practicing social distancing? I have to ask you that. <laughs> well, right now we're not offering lap dances. Oh! You can tip on stage, but no lap dances. So right now we're not doing any lap dances. All right, so how is this going to work? You walk into the strip club. How are you practicing social distancing in a strip club while looking at uh, half-naked or naked women? I mean, how, how does this work? Are you allowed to sit on the stage, and, and are you allowed to put dollar bills? And You know, you, you, you understand what I'm asking here. Like, what are the restrictions here? Well, the restrictions are, we, we like I said, it's like a regular strip club. You come in, you can tip on stage. The girls just have to wear a mask. So like I said, your tipping on stage is pretty much typical of any probably strip club so we're letting that go we're also offering like i said a touchless uh lap dance so you could do a lap dance like that but um yeah so it's going pretty well so when you get a touchless lap dance is it cheaper than a regular lap dance or would it be the same price <laughs> it'd be the same <laughs> price but that'd be your option like i said that's all we're doing as of right now but like i said the tipping on stage is is, is, is typical like i said you can put your money out there the girls can come up to you um but like I said, all our staff will have are, are wearing masks. So, so is it possible that, uh, well, I was not just possible, but very likely that a dancer just all they have on is just a mask at at some point. Uh, like tonight, tonight is our all dude night, so the only thing they're going to be wearing is a mask. That's it. Wow, that is just such a weird sight. That is so wild. That is, just, I, you know, I'm just trying to picture that somebody wearing a mask, completely naked. It's 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 interesting. That might actually work out, Greg, for people who have like medical fetish fetishes. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> to see a naked woman yeah, with I a hospital mask, yeah. Not it doesn't do it for me, but I wouldn't be look. I wouldn't be looking at the at the face. I'd be looking from the neck down. So of I course, I, I feel like a live stream of that would do extremely <laughs> well internationally, Greg. That is that is. That, I think it would take off a kind of a certain fetish there was just the mask on. I think it's going to work. Yeah. All right, so so let me ask you this. You, how long have you been open for since this? Uh, we opened last Friday. It was our first night. Okay, so how's your business? Are people, uh, you know, you getting some business in there? and are, Is it doing well? How has this gone the last several days? It's, it's been actually amazing. We opened up, and I was a little worried about it, but uh, we were, we were it was almost like a regular Friday night. I mean, I'm keeping it about half capacity. My, I have a small bar, so I can hold at least 100 people. I'm keeping it around 50 people, but we had that 50 people in there. Like I said, it was it was a good night. The girls made real good money. Um, I think guys are just ready to get out there and you know feel normal again. So. Well, guys are always going to be horny. That's never going to change. That's for sure. All right. So uh, yeah. let me ask let me ask you this, Greg. So uh, as you know, just outside of Las Vegas, prostitution is legal, and I, and it just that uh, you know they force women and rightfully so, to get tested for no STDs and all that stuff. So I'm making that correlation to this. I know that prostitution is illegal in Wyoming. However, with this coronavirus, are you forcing some of these women to get tested? Are there any rules and guidelines? Do they have to be tested every week, every two weeks? Do you have any of that going on? No, none of that's going on. They're not requiring any of that to go on. I, 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 wish, I wish they would, though. I mean, I wouldn't have any problem, and I'm sure the girls wouldn't have any problem. That way people would feel it's even safer to go there, but... Um, no guidelines as of now, so nothing like that. Wow, that is interesting. Were you surprised when you got the go-ahead to open up your strip club? Were you surprised last Friday? Uh, not really surprised. I've just been waiting. Like I said, I've been wanting to open. Like I said, it's been hard to be closed for three months, and um, I wasn't really surprised. I was more shocked that they're gonna, they opened up massage parlors. They opened up uh, tattoo shops before they opened up me, so I, I was a little bit... Uh, I wasn't surprised. I was All right, happy. hold on a second. Do hold on a second. You're telling me that the governor allowed massage parlors, I would imagine, and I think it's a fair assumption, that there are some sexual favors being granted to some customers in some of these massage parlors. You're telling me that they said that was okay to open up a massage parlor when a, when a woman is touching a man all over the place but yet they wouldn't let you open up your strip club? I'm sorry. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Absolutely. That's how I felt. Like I said, it, it just, I, it, I went bonkers when I heard that. I was like, I cannot imagine them letting uh, – you, what you said is pretty much what I was saying the entire time that they did that. I was like, you you got to be kidding. How well, is that possible? I'm getting a text message from one of my friends, Chris Wynn, that, that said that he's going to be moving to Wyoming since those massage parlors just opened up. But uh, I think that's a wise decision, Chris. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Greg Chavez. He's the owner of The Den out there in Cheyenne, 
Wyoming. Uh, so I've been out there to Wyoming a few times. I've seen some basketball games out there. Uh, not too far away from Denver either. So do you, do you feel like everything is, a, is starting to get back to normal there in Wyoming? Can you give us a sense of, you know, what phase you're in and, and all, all these local businesses now starting to open up? Is there any sense of normalcy out there now? There, there is a sense. Like I said, most of our, our restaurants are open up there. Like I said, our, our bars are opening up. So there is a, finally a sense of, norm, of people just being normal again, like I said. And I think, you know, like all the patrons I've had come in, they just I think they just feel good to be out, being able to have a beer, talk to somebody, just relax. I mean, it's, it's, it's been nice. So I think it's getting there. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Just out of curiosity, can you give us a little bit of background on your strip club? How long? I know you just reopened up on Friday, but how long have you uh, owned this club for? And uh, just give us a little bit of background and history about it. Well, the club's probably been there probably, I want, I want to say, about 40 years. It used to be called the Clown's Den. And then uh, I didn't like the idea of the whole, the whole clown thing. So I took over uh, about 15 to 16 years ago, and we just changed it to the den. So I've owned it for about 15 years, me and my wife. So. You and your wife. So how does that conversation work? Uh, just from a strip club owner's perspective, you're, you're a happily married man, I would assume. How does that conversation go with your wife and you say, honey, I'm thinking about owning a strip club. I mean, I'm just curious. How does, how does that conversation go? It, well, actually, it was a little flip. My, my wife is very liberal. I'm a, I'm a very lucky guy. And so <laughs> it was pretty much her idea to do the, to do the whole thing. You know, I, I can confirm that you are a very lucky guy considering those circumstances. <laughs> so, so, Brian, the crazy part about Wyoming is that there's only 766 cases there and 10 deaths. So the fact that, that, yeah. they're, that they're opening that way, to, to me, I mean, I'm, I, I think that you, know, you guys should be in in stage four completely wide open with with zero social distancing that that's just me yeah. based on what, what what i know about the virus but but i mean d do you think that there's a sense in wyoming or has there been a sense in wyoming that like maybe we shouldn't have any lockdown whatsoever because of the fact that there just isn't a lot of virus in the state God, you have to talk about the virus again wait a minute i wanted to talk Absolutely. about his wife a little bit all right go ahead go ahead <laughs> no it's true though yeah i think everybody i've talked to a lot of other business owners we're we're, we're just doing the same thing on why the cases are low. I mean, any death is bad, but the death rate is super low. Um, yeah, I think we should be wide open, too, by now. I, 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 I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, I guess if I ever go to a strip club in Las Vegas anytime soon when they're allowed to reopen, I look forward to seeing uh, very attractive women uh, wearing little to few clothes but wearing a mask. That does sound interesting, and that's quite a sight well, to see. <laughs> and, and, Greg, are you going to do any type of – or are you, are you even legally able to do some type of, like, live stream of the performances? Because I'm, I'm telling you, Greg, I really think that, that those girls with a live mask stream. What are you will do exceptionally well. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm, I am very serious about this. I think that will do exceptionally well. I, I would, I would be totally interested in doing some kind of live streaming. I could even do some, uh, uh, maybe some photos tonight. Send you guys some pictures if you'd like, uh, of how, how, whatever. Yes, like. please, Greg. I will give you my email. <laughs> <laughs> producer at the Vegas take.com. That's producer at the Vegas take.com. In fact, if any women, or anybody in the audience outside of Cheyenne, Wyoming, mean, wants to send me half-naked photos, <laughs> um, you can send it to those email addresses. Greg, right just send them pictures of, of some of the most disgusting customers that you have. And take pictures of them and then send it to the producer. That's what you should do. No, in all seriousness, Greg, thank you so much for, for coming on, man. You sound like a real fun guy. And, and I'll be honest with you, your strip club sounds like a fun place to go to. We might actually take a trip out there. Mask only, Brian. Yeah, I like Mask it. only. I like I it. I like it. Greg, thanks for taking the time, man. To Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Greg. That's Greg Chavez. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, Greg. Greg Chavez, owner of the den. Boy, what a wife he has. She comes up to him and says, hey, honey, I'm thinking about buying a strip club. Wait, a male strip club? No, a female <laughs> strip club. How would you like to give auditions with some of these women? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll sign up. For so, that. Amazing. The Wyoming University is in Laramie, right? It's not in Cheyenne? Correct. Okay, do you think he's a big Cowboys fan? Didn't, don't know. I didn't ask no. him about that. Do you think that they serve... <laughs> Who cares? Dear jerky. Personally, I think you're a sexual deviant, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I am. I am. That's true, actually. I'd rather talk about the strip club and women wearing masks with nothing on than talk about uh, the horrible Wyoming cowboy uh, football and basketball programs, personally. That's well, just I, I wonder if the, the one guy who wears, what, what does he wear? Is he like a trash can, basically? Oh, the barrel guy. Yeah. The barrel, do you think the barrel guy spends a lot of time at the dent? Uh, I don't know how he'd give that guy a lap dance. I don't know how he could sit down, but uh, that barrel guy's probably like 80 years old. Do you think that 
he opens up his barrel and lets another dancer get in the barrel with him? I mean, you can ask him that. I don't know. It sounds like you have a weird fe fetish with the barrel guy. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't even know why. You know, I'm getting all sexually excited here, and I'm talking about a strip club opening up, and then you want to bring up some 80-year-old man with nothing on but a barrel. What is no, wrong with you? You think Wyoming Cowboys, you think the barrel guy. You think, you think fans <laughs> in the stands just drunk as skunks. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a fan at, at any type of Wyoming game, whether it's basketball or football, that doesn't have an alcoholic <laughs> beverage in their hand. I, I, Yes. Listen, I understand what you're saying. The only point I'm trying to make is this. We're talking about very attractive women yeah. uh, uh, wearing masks, and I'm just surprised that the, the first image that comes to your head is the well, barrel. You know, and, and, I, and I saw a major opportunity for him there, because I, I do actually think that if, if he has some good-looking dancers, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm that, sure he does. I'm assuming that he does have some good-looking dancers, that there will be a lot of people on a national and international scale that would love to see these dancers only in masks. Well, you, your fascination with the barrel man is like when Chris Wynn went to AVN and took pictures with uh, Ed Oh, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. It is, it is strange. Not even close. It is a little strange. Not even the same conversation. An Chris, Wynn, Chris Wynn was around 500 porn stars, female porn stars, <laughs> and the one he recognized was a male porn star. The one person he met, the one person he got a picture with was a male porn star, despite the fact that he was surrounded by female porn okay, stars. Okay, but totally on. different animal here. To his defense... We are talking about beautiful naked women wearing masks, uh -huh. and the one image that comes keep, keep to mind. Keep in mind, I'm married, Brian. Okay, but that's academic. And my wife is likely listening right now. That's academic. The one person Factor you think in. of is a man with alligator skin that is like 80 years old, is utterly disgusting, half naked in a barrel. That's all. I just wanted to point that out. That's all. It's a little strange. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, you know, we've been talking a lot about The Last Dance and this, this supposed pizza that Michael Jordan got. Uh, and that's why he was sick. Uh, game five against the Utah Jazz. Well, we're learning more about the Pizzagate. We're learning more about this pizza that Michael Jordan got uh, from the man who actually put this documentary together. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this, and we'll share that with you. It's the Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Don. This is good news, maybe exactly when you need it to. Right now, MetaShare is waiving their new member fees. This could save you money on top of all that you'll save each month by becoming a member of MetaShare. So many people are looking for a healthcare solution right now, seeing the cost of COBRA plans, for instance, and MetaShare is the affordable alternative to health insurance. The typical family saves $500 a month. You might save even more. MediShare is a Christian community that shares each other's health care costs, and because of the current economic situation, they're making it easier than ever. Apply by May 30th, and you can save an additional $170 on your first month. I'll give you the number here in a second, and if you call, you can get a price within two minutes. Just tell them the promo code SHARE to receive your additional savings. Maybe now is the time to make the switch like more than 400,000 people already have and start saving. Here it is. Call 844-91-BIBLE. That's 844-91-BIBLE. 844-91-BIBLE. That's all I need for the afternoon. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm good. Days, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now back to the Benning biggest take medicine. on 1015 FM, 720 AM. K-Dawn. Tell me I'm Chris Wayne. I've been stoned as well. I'm not. It's not. It's not. All right. I'm going to change that song to a song that would uh, suit JD very well. Barrelman, Barrelman, Barrelman. That would be, uh, that'd be JD's song. <laughs> he likes the men in barrels. I made I made one inquiry about this particular. What have we learned about? I didn't, I didn't even know he was in a barrel. I thought he I, I thought he was in like right. a hay. Well, like, two, like in a hay. Two fetishes we've learned. Bag like two, a potato bag. Two fetishes we learned from JD Sharp today. Number one, he likes women in masks, and number two, he likes uh, old men in barrels in Wyoming. Uh, but anyway, welcome back to the show. It's the Vegas he's, Day. He's also pestering me to get some deer jerky. I am. Yeah, that's just bizarre. If we could score a pound of, of solid deer jerky out of that last interview, I'd be a very happy man. Deer jerky. Where do you get this from? It's just bizarre. You get it from Wyoming, Brian. That's just, that's just weird. It is pretty tasty, though. It's deer been, jerky? It's delightful, and it's All good right. for you. All right. Well, enjoy your deer jerky and uh, old men in barrels. Uh, anyway, welcome back to the show. It's the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro uh, on a Tuesday. So we've been talking a lot about The Last Dance, and I've been very critical of Michael Jordan, uh, the things, mainly the things he did off the court. Obviously, the best basketball player of all time, at least in my opinion. But uh, I've criticized this documentary because I believe a lot of the stuff in it is not true based on the sources that I have. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, the guy that knows everything and knows everybody, but I have talked to people that have played with Michael Jordan. I've talked to people on the training staff. I've talked to people that were very close to Michael Jordan, friends of Michael Jordan. 
And a lot of the stuff in this documentary was not true. Why? Because, well, Michael Jordan had the last say, and it was through the lens of Michael Jordan, and it was his narrative. It was not anybody else's narrative. This was Michael Jordan's narrative. Make no mistake about it. Well, we talk about this story about Michael Jordan before Game 5 against the Utah Jazz. Uh, I've heard from so many uh, relevant sources, good sources, that he had his private jet, and the night before Game 5 against the Utah Jazz in the playoffs, he took off in his private jet, and he was hanging out with one of his mistresses. Do I know 100% sure if that was true? No, but there are logs, and there are uh, you know jet logs or whatever plane he was taking that would prove that. Um, that's what I heard. And I heard that he was up all night. He didn't get any sleep. And it wasn't food poisoning, and it wasn't a pizza. Now, the narrative that The Last Dance uh, put together was that Michael Jordan the night before ordered a pizza. And we learned that that pizza somehow gave him food poisoning and that there were five people that delivered the pizza. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. If that happened, those people would have been fired, and we would have heard about it. A lot it. of questions. Yeah, there, there's no... there's no. How way. would they even yeah. know, Brian, you said, yeah, and it's, this is what they said in the documentary. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, they said that they... Or, they, they first of all, they weren't in Salt Lake City. They were like out in the middle of nowhere. And they, they, they tried... Jordan was hungry, and they tried to find a pizza, and they found one place that was open, and they ordered at 1030 at night. And five people showed up to deliver the pizza, it's like absurd. peeking in the room. Oh, is it Michael? How on earth would they know that it's Michael Jordan I don't in buy the it. room? I don't buy it for one second. I think this is another one of those cover-ups, and it's through the lens of Michael Jordan. But uh, Last Dance director Jason uh, Hayer uh, offered a little bit more to the story uh, as far as Pizzagate is concerned. He was on uh, Jalen Rose podcast. It's a pretty good podcast. So, again, this is the Last Dance director uh, giving a little more insight into this Pizzagate situation. Have a listen to this. Earlier that night, those guys all ate dinner and didn't wait for Michael when they ordered. So it gets to be about 10, 11 o'clock, and Michael is starving and says, I want a pizza or get me something. And we're talking about Salt Lake City. They're actually way on the outskirts of Salt Lake, and that's, that's another layer to this story is that they weren't staying in downtown where things would be readily available. There was no room service in the hotel, so they call out. When the pizza shows up, Michael says, everybody, do not touch this pizza. This is mine. You didn't wait for me. Don't touch this. So he spits on the pizza. <laughs> First of all, I can totally picture Michael Jordan doing something that is classic, like that. classic, MJ. Uh, but I'm not buying this story. Sorry. I'm no? just not buying it. No. no. Not at all. No. First of all, I don't buy that there were five people outside the room, that somebody actually intentionally poisoned a pizza and committed a felony. I don't. Well, you remember that movie Celtic Pride? Okay, this isn't a Celtic Pride situation. Yeah, we I have do. Dan Aykroyd uh, uh, that's trying to uh, kidnap the star of the Utah Jazz so that, so that his Celtics can win. This is this yeah. is ridiculous. That was a movie. This did not happen in real life. It's nonsense. I'm sorry. I don't believe it for a second. If you were attorneys for Michael Jordan or the Bulls. Would you not immediately go, you to file that, a police report? go to that pizza place and try to figure yeah. out what, what happened if yeah. you if you poisoned? See, this is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about this documentary and I'm talking about how they didn't uh, question Michael Jordan on certain things, that's what I would have asked. If you believe, and what you're saying is a felony. Again, it wasn't Hold called on. The Truth About Michael Jordan. Okay, but yeah. you're saying that wasn't the name this, of the is a, this is a big part of the Bulls. I get he it. was sick in Game 5. This was a, an important game, and they're claiming that he got food poisoning, an intentional act, not an accidental act. They're saying that a pizza place intentionally gave uh -huh. him food poisoning. Why wouldn't you call the police? Why wouldn't you tell us what pizza place it was? Why wouldn't there be a police report? I mean, none of this stuff happened. Because MJ enjoyed the challenge. Yeah, well, because I think it's a bunch of bullying. He bologna. wanted to challenge himself. And despite, and despite the fact he was such a competitor, that despite the fact that a pizzeria in Salt Lake City, Utah, where the, the Utah Jazz, his opponent, was located, decided to poison him, he said, nah, bologna. F that. I'm still going to beat these guys. Bologna. And I'm not going to press charges. Absolutely not. So you actually think that, at, just from what our, our, our various conversations on this, you think that MJ basically caused his father's death because of his gambling. You think that because of his gambling, he also was out of the league for a year and a half. And I think that everything, and you can look at it both ways. The way that, that I mean, they did a really good job of setting up that way. You could say, okay, his dad died accidentally. Well, not accidentally. He, he pulled up on the side of the road in his Lexus okay. and he was murdered. It wasn't, it. it wasn't an accident, but obviously, obviously he was brutally murdered. It wasn't because of something MJ did. But they had conversations about MJ playing baseball prior to his death, and so as a tribute to his father, and because he wanted his dad to watch his last ever basketball game, which he would have at that point, he decided to go the baseball route. So whether whatever your school of thought is, whether you want to look at MJ in a positive light or an extremely negative you know, cover-up light, 
you can based on the based on the circumstances. I am going as an optimist. I am saying that I don't believe that MJ's gambling caused his father's death, and I don't think that MJ was betting on his own games or, or, or was wagering on games at all in the NBA, and that caused his suspension for the year and a half, okay. which led to his baseball um, career. So I'm not you, forming you, this. You take a different school of thought, which not, is totally fine. I'm not forming it on just a feeling or an opinion. I'm forming it on at least two players that played with him, okay. and I'm also forming it on somebody that was on the training staff, and I'm also forming it on somebody that is a very, very, very very popular NBA agent that seems to know everything. And if I said his name, you've met him before. I'm forming it on several people. Wait, I've met him? Yes. I, I'll tell you after the show. I'm forming it on several people that played with him that were a part of the Bulls organization or and, 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 and a few NBA agents. And they've all told me the same story, that David Stern had a wonderful relationship with Michael Jordan, that Michael Jordan's gambling and gambling addictions got way out of hand, and he was finally caught. And it was finally addressed by the NBA and David Stern. Michael Jordan was the face of basketball. Then he was right, the superstar, was. and they put it under the rug. You know what? He still kind of is because his brand is still okay. so successful. Well, I'm just telling you why I believe that, yes, that he did gamble on the game, and, and I believe it wasn't just one of those situations. You know what? I think uh, when I'm going to win more NBA championships, I'm just going to hang it up, and I'm just going to try to be a professional baseball player. It's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. You know, when, it I didn't mean, happen. Name one player in the NBA who's ever, actually in any sport, who's ever had more than a three-peat. In any professional sport who's ever had more than a three-peat, name one. Name, right. one, name one team ever, because uh, there isn't one. Right, but that has nothing to do with my opinion on whether he bet when, on the basketball. When you, when you win three times in a row, at, I mean, at that yeah. point— Jordan I, was a killer. Now, he I, wanted to I'm win not, four I'm not saying he's, he, he's not a killer, but again, his dad was actually killed. And, he, and he, he, he had a lot of respect for his dad. His dad went to almost all of his games, and they had legitimate— I mean, keep in mind, his, his first sport was baseball. It wasn't basketball. And he just walked into this organization, hit 202 with no experience whatsoever, had five bombs, 50 RBIs, stole 35 bases. I mean, the, the guy had a chance to be a legitimate professional baseball player. It is possible that he may not have returned to basketball if that, lock, if that lockout didn't take place in baseball. I disagree. I think he was returning to basketball no matter what. Uh, it was just a matter of time, and I said that when when I was a kid. When he left to play baseball, I said, this isn't going to be v- last very long, guys. This isn't going to last But also long. keep in mind, when, when, and, when Jordan was gone, it gave a chance to Shaq and, and Penny Hardaway and, and a bunch of those other players to kind of build themselves okay, up, well, which is good for the NBA. Because you, you don't want fans of just one player and one team. You want it on, on a national level. You want fans for, for all teams for all over the country because if it's, it's recall, good for ratings at that if point. If you recall, the man who owned the Chicago Bulls – also owned the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, he, wanted, Dorf, yeah. he wanted a return on his investment. I also find that to be very, very interesting that he decides to play for the Chicago White Sox, and all of a sudden, Reinstorf is getting just a little bit of return on his investment. Well, where else would he play? Uh, how about anywhere? And actually, about anywhere? actually, he didn't get a return because he never actually played pro ball. What do you mean he didn't get a return? He owned the the, the double A, triple A affiliate. He was he, getting he money played, on ticket yeah, sales. He played for yeah. In what's in what size of stadium? What are you? Are you kidding a, me? A very small. You don't think that helped his very, bottom line? I'm sure it did a little bit. Of course it did. It's not like he was in a ninety thousand person stadium. It's it was probably, it was probably. I mean, it was probably smaller than the Aviator. I can almost guarantee you it was smaller than the Aviator. And Ryan it, it was what ten thousand? Listen, Reinsdorf wanted a return on his investment. He had to pay out Michael Jordan. He wanted a return. I think it's on his nominal in the grand scheme of things, considering okay. how small the stadium is. It's not. It's the most money that franchise ever made. Well, of course it is. Because, but it's minor league baseball. They probably had a capacity of five thousand. They were selling they, tickets for a lot more money than they're selling tickets for now. For because how much? of Michael Jordan. My understanding is tickets were three, four, five, six times more. They, trust me, Reinsdorf wanted a return okay, on so his so you, investment. So you think that Reinsdorf made what twenty million dollars in one year? I think Reinsdorf wanted a return on his investment, and that's what he got. He got a return on his investment, along with the fact that I believe Michael Jordan was suspended from the NBA for one year. That is my opinion, and it's based on a lot of good sources well, okay. that I've, I've talked to. And, and again, my opinion is the exact opposite. I think that his dad was killed by two punk kids. Jordan took that to heart. He said, you know what? My dad watched my last game. We talked about baseball. I'm going to play baseball. But again, the, 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 the beauty about the documentary, and that director did a great job also explaining it, but the beauty about the documentary is you can decide which way you want to go. And, it, and either way isn't wrong, in my opinion. Okay, well, the only thing I would think everybody would agree on is that Michael Jordan, not a very good dude. Uh, he's not a good dude. Uh, that's just the bottom line. Very selfish. Uh, you know, uh, might be the best basketball player to ever live, but not I a mean, really I, great I think human you could being. say he's, he's uh, psychopathic. 
I mean, the guy used to he used to make lies to himself up to prepare himself. Like like for example, that that LeBradford yeah, yeah. Smith. Yep. Remember, he had one big game against him, and MJ he had like thirty nine, and I think he went like fourteen of twenty two, and I mean, he just played outstanding, and MJ played terrible, and they only lost by a couple points. But MJ after that game told basically lied to himself and told him that LeBradford Smith like walked up to him and said, "Great game, MJ." Like he did he did those type of things to convince himself that you know to, to motivate himself to play better. All right, we got to take a 21-hour break, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Hannity coming up next. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a fantastic Your afternoon. For Sean Hannity, KDWN Las Vegas, KKLZ HD2 Las Vegas, a Beasley Media Group station.